Tell you what, I was travelling in a fried out hauler on a pirate's trail, hard point smaller. I met a strange lady, her name was Flossie. She took me in, boy was she bossy. And she said, do you come from a pad down under where shields glow and men plunder? Can't you hear? Can't you hear it, boy wonder? You better fly, don't stay here and hover. And what did you say to that? I drew myself up to my full height, adjusted my didgeridoo, and uttered the words that my forebears passed down from mouth to mouth, sometimes even without cleaning their teeth. Our mics are live. Good evening, everyone. I am Rudolf Crocodile Hucker, and I can assure you that we'll, all of this will make sense later in the show, unless, of course, Litho Break has already worked it out, in which case he can tell you. Joining me this Arvo is the little jumbuck, Harry Balzac. G'day. The ripper, Wilma Fingerdoo. Howdy. Ready to apologise on everyone's behalf is Mia Harkness. She'll be right, mate. Just plain ready is a pond that'll never whinge. It's Juan Kerr. Good on you, mate. And of course, sitting under the shade of the cooler bar tree is the sweet as they come, Norma Snockers. No worries. Ripper, now on with the show. Cecil gets his helping hand caught in the cookie jar. Captain Beard says theft is no skin off his nose. Is he taking the bris? Ask yourself, what would Scooby Loo do? Frontier Towers absconds from showers. Fuel Rat gets a face full of dog's breath. In lieu of Lou, it's me telling you. My two cents on making sense of events. To Alvin Deshere from Cecil B. Trumpington, that's me, regarding a slight mishap concerning Drunk Russian 23. Dear Alvin, it appears there may have been a slight little mishap on board of one of those lovely fleet carrier thingies. Finding myself temporarily a little strapped for cash, I took on a job recently to look after a nice, really big consignment of gin for the mug on behalf of Commander Drunk Russian 23. I mean, with a name like that, you wouldn't trust him with the key to your drinks cabinet, would you? And I never did understand what he meant about Fox and, and Hen House. Perhaps it was his way of being affectionate, after all. He did say, for fuck's sake, not you, when I arrived for my assignment. After checking just a few bottles to make sure they did for the mug, indeed contain gin that they were supposed to, I was awoken from a restful sleep by the sound of pirates. Or rather, a pirate. Well, it was somebody creeping around at any rate. I bravely reached out to tap him on the shoulder, forgetting, of course, that I was still holding a very luckily empty bottle, and I may have accidentally tapped him on the head rather hard with it. At this point, standing over the now prone body, I realised that of my host, it was him, yes, inebriated Slav 42, or w whatever his name is, and I decided the best way to avoid any misdirected wrath that may be pointed my way was to do something really nice for the chap and help him with his task of delivering the booze. So, 
I launched his cutter with his boat on board and looked around for a destination. Aha! We were 2,000 light years from habitable space, surrounded by about five types of bugger all, and that became six when Mr. Ratast Siberian 2.0's fleet carrier proceeded to crawl up on its own fundament as it disappeared from view. Now, I really do think that the button in the cockpit marked eject fuel scoop do not press under any circumstances is just a, a teensy little bit ambiguous. Though, I must accept just the smallest part of the blame for putting my glass down on top of it. Mr. Sozzled Moscovite 17 was terribly nice about the whole thing, likely, but the things would have looked just a mite tricky for us, it stranded as we were, with an every decreasing cargo, ever decreasing cargo of gin for the mug, when that splendid chap, that, that python broke, yes, you know the one, um, Montgomery, he's the one, arrived with his carrier and offered us a lift to catch up with our missing one. Now, at this point, all would have been perfectly okay, except that after delivering a quantity of gin for the mug where it was needed, Mr. Bladded Bolshevik Pie R Squared may have sampled too much of his own product, as he was apparently distracted by lots of flying orange sidewinders. When taking a pot shot at one of them, he may have accidentally grazed a just a little part of the station we were in, hence me dictating this letter from a detention centre back in the bubble. Yours sincerely, me. Throughout the galaxy, there are names and faces of the infamous plastered all over the walls of security management offices, law enforcement boards, and printed on the back of Azure milk cartons. Names such as the dastardly Don Antonacci, wanted for crimes against Hutton, or Harry Potter, wanted for waving his wand where it wasn't wanted, and Commander Thrust of Bradford, wanted for breaking temporal laws and spilling the beans on what's in Odyssey, as in his words, he's already completed it. This week, a new face has appeared on the board, one Arthur Tolmy of the Pilots' Federation. This former communications officer, we say former, as after his deeds, there's no way the PF would let him stay at Shinrata anymore, has been implicated in a heist. Daylight robbery, breaking and entering, thievery of the smashy grabby kind. As part of the testing team for tenuous atmospheres, he was tasked with testing the trigger mode on his new flight suit, and only on planets with aforementioned thin atmospheres. It appears that he not only managed to smuggle his suit out after the tests and go hopping around on an airless world like a moon landing merkin after a mean fairway shot, but also borrowed some of the new Odyssey brand equipment due for release later this year. He then proceeded to break into a saloon, knock back a sarsaparilla, enter a gunfight with a few of the locals, start a barroom brawl, break their pianola, keep the undertaker busy, break into the bank, shout stick em up, steal everything that wasn't nailed down, and then hold up a stagecoach with a bandana over his remlock and a menacing glint in his eye. He is now said to be on the run with a number of known accomplices, including one Commander Braben, wanted for poking things with his Dysonator, Commander Benedetti, for masquerading as a Scotsman despite clearly being Sicilian Mafia, and Commander Garrido for actually being Sicilian Mafia. The frameshift bandits, as they are now known, are considered to be armed with broadcast equipment and an ensuite and should be treated as exceedingly dangerous. A fifth member of the gang is as of yet unidentified, though there are rumours that he might be the notorious new boy Don Two, known for his signature Zack attack disarming move. They're said to be being aided by Doc Ross and their getaway pilot Crowther, a former butler from the Empire. 
making them the Munificent Seven, stealing from the rich and then handing out purple paint jobs to those in need. If you see these criminals, and if you value your sanity and safety, please report them to the Galactic Forums as soon as you can. Hutton's administration team received an incoming communication from Commander Scooby-Loo this week on behalf of Alvin, who gets everyone to open his post for him in case it's not wonky chalk dog treats and therefore disappointing. It contains a harrowing tale of the trials and tribulations of a long-term trucker who has been brung low by a case of the mods. Yes, mug ownership deficiency syndrome. Feeling more than a little under the weather, Scoob was hauled and hauled by a fellow commander to the Hutton Infirmary for a bit of a checkup and an extended MOT by the HMT, that's Hutton Medical Technician, was immediately quarantined and brought under the care of Nurse Wyeth, mods expert, expert and pair of hands in which every trucker feels a little better when they've got the lurgy. Mods is a horrific condition, masquerading as everything from space mumps to the lurgy, cooties, general malaise, hotbox thumb, oof, and much more besides. And after being put into the hospital by Honkatron, it was confirmed to have spread through his system. Only one solution for it, the rapid insertion of a mug direct to his renal system. Of course, we don't know why it wasn't powdered and given as an ice drink, or even just turned into medical grade tools and gently rubbed on the affected area, but there we go. With a little pushing and shoving and more than a few tears in his eyes, it was inserted and he was told to get plenty of bed rest and not to move for fear of shattering the mug and ending up with an MRI, that's mug related injury. Skib's first thought though wasn't for himself but for a fellow trucker, a commander named Halfbreed Rubio. Commander Rubio, by way of helping ensure that Scoob was safely tucked away in hospital, that he had some hollow me company and by ensuring that Scoob wasn't worrying about those big fleet carrier bills when he was indisposed, has, in the opinion of Scoob, behaved as a proper Hutton trucker should, caring for his fellow pilot even if all the way from Colonia and via, via digital connection. Having received, the, having reviewed the nomination and circumstances surrounding it, Alvin has authorised the award of a Hutton mug in recognition of behaviour most becoming a Hutton trucker, and asked that the Happy Rubio please contact Hutton HQ at the earliest opportunity to have all manner of things pinned on him, maybe even the blame for LHS 340, you never know. Remember, real personal use Hutton mugs can't be bought, only earned and helping to look after your fellow pilots in their darkest hours is the most worthy of methods. It appears that whilst many of us have been shivering under our space blankets, and even butt naked's been shoveling a different kind of material than usual, snow as it happens, the Pilots Federation appear to have beaten a hasty retreat from the splendour of Frontier Towers and moved to somewhere much, much warmer, almost to the other side of the world. Namely, a land down under. If words like down and under can be used in a galaxy that really shouldn't be limited to such an outdated concept, but we're using them whether or not it's politically or even galactically correct. How did we come to this conclusion? Well. Owing to a recent spat between Galbuk and a small island off the coast of Tasmania, where the islanders wanted to make the news pay-per-view, meaning that in order to access the news, they were forcing their denizens to insert coins, then pull a large handle to see what random collection of words would appear on the screen. Which doesn't actually seem to us to be very much different from the way most news outlets set up their front pages. Anyone trying to use the Pilots Federation news outlet was summarily told that Australian news can't be shared. The only way this could happen would be if Galbuk thought that the Pilots Federation was based near a billabong. Now, without this, we'd never have suspected that the staff canteen was now serving giant prawns from a beach barbie instead of curled up egg and cress sandwiches in rainy Cambridgeshire. Would have had no inclination that the designs for Odyssey suits now incorporate a place to keep your tinnies, and the world would have been spared the sight of David Braben in shorts. 
we can only hope that the Pilots Federation soon come to their senses and come back home. Because goodness knows, knows how they'll interpret slip, slap, slop. Sticking with the Antipodean theme, we've had an exclusive transcript of the latest interview by Commander Dog's Breath of the Head Fuel Rat aboard the fleet carrier Everest. Due to a communications breakdown, as only Hutton can manage on our shows, we've used actors to fill in for the missing audio section of this broadcast. We apologise in advance for any stereotyping, inadvertent humour, we insert into the next section. Your interviewer, Commander Dog's Breath, is voiced by Bruce, a visiting Australian. Your interviewee is the Chief Mission Fuel Rat from the Carrier Everest, voiced by some posh English type we found lurking in the bar. G'day. Your first question, can I land my sidewinder on the helipad? A tad bit sorry about that. Uh, depends on how good a pilot you are. It's only a small pad and it takes 12.5 metric tons. Damn, my D rated sidewinder with optionals, utilities and HPs, empty weighs at least 30. So, what's the uh, mug based beverage of choice amongst the crew? Freshly ground quality coffee, of course. Now, how cold are your Snickers and how many tons can be feasibly stowed on board? We've run out of Snickers, but we can fit 17 million 50 gram bars. Did you give the uh, landlubbers Snickers or just normal boring food? Oh, they don't deserve Snickers. The Chief Fuel Rat's Fuel Rat logo falls off his face mask at this point. Cat? Ah, yeah, right. Um, how early in the morning do you get up? I'm not sure I could stomach anything before about 11.45am. Mornings are a figment of twisted imaginations. Very good. Uh, now, uh, heads, buy a waste. Do you flush or vacuum? And are two heads better than one? We vacuum, and two are definitely better than one, because I hate queuing for anything. Yeah, an important scientific question here. Is it a fuel of a... Is it one type, or are there different fuels for different applications? Uh, we've got several types of fuel and several prices. And, and how is the uh, the fuel stored to prevent it freezing? Stored in both tanks, some require heating, others don't. ULP and ATK are stored in drums. Now, what are the precautions and mitigations for storage and transfer against uh, spillage? We have very strictly adhered to the standard operating procedures and checklists, and only a few rats and occasional hot and truckers are allowed to pump fuel. A yeah, very important question here from uh, Alvin. Uh, do you have a ship's cap? No ship's cap, but we do have cap flaps. And and what is the, the biggest snowman you've built in Antarctica? Three and a half meters using a small excavator. Here's a, a, a rather strange one. What do you answer when you're asked how many polar bears have you seen? Only one. Now, as we know, uh, all southerners are soft, and the Antarctic is about as south as it gets. So the, the important question is, what's the uh, least amount of clothing you've dared to wear outside in Antarctica? Because, you know, a Newcastle lad would be shut off. Clothes? What are clothes? We do a midwinters and midsummer swim each year. Some people might wear budgie smugglers, if they're shy. Now, uh, which species of penguin has been observed to uh, tap dance best? Adelis. Uh, that's quite controversial. Uh, are you sure? Our, our voyage management assistant is confident it'll be rock hoppers. No, Adelis. Uh, any particular reason why? Well, there's more of them, and anyway, rock hoppers are more like punks, and they can't dance. And, and also, um, is there a clear briefing item that, that no one, absolutely no one, is to lick any exposed metal parts of the ship? Oh yes, it gets mentioned a number of times. And, and more importantly, has it ever happened? Well, not that I know of. Uh, 
As a side note, the Antarctic Field Manual recommends a warm liquid be used to remove sticky or ice stuck button. <laughs> I should start again. As an interesting side note and possibly more coherent than the last one, the Antarctic Field Manual recommends a warm liquid be used to remove ice stuck body parts. Fortunately, when a young lady licked a carabiner on the bow of the Aurora and was asked to kneel at the feet of her rescuer, there was a fleet. There was a flask of warm Milo Handy. True story. <laughs> right. I'm glad you cleared that one up. Now, what's the strangest smell on the ship? Oh, that's easy. Cabin 806. And, and have you ever seen any ancient ruins or uh, six-foot-tall penguins? Yes, but not all at the same time. I've got a few fun facts for everyone to finish this off. Types of fuel are SAB, Special Antarctic Blend, diesel with a waxing point of around minus 20 C, but usually heated to 10 degrees C before running in a generator. Our main fuel for power generation and big plant. ULP, Undeaded Petrol, good to around minus 25 C, but additives can be added at any point. ATK, Aviation Turbine Kerosene. All of our ATK has anti-waking agents and is good at any temperature. You can crank a helicopter rotor. MOD, Mar MDO, good God, man. MDO, marine diesel oil. The ship runs on it and we take a couple million litres with us for fun and giggles. Thank you both. We look forward to seeing the pictures once you either A, get back home, or B, work out how to turn the transmitter back on. We have a bit of a howling wolf problem, so with a bit to pack in, I'll whistle through it. Firstly, in Carson and Ari, it was yet another week of embarrassment for Hutton, as we inexorably climbed to almost 25%, despite, of course, assuring the controlling player faction, Ronin Inc., that we have no hostile intent. It was all going fine until a week ago, and then we started to climb again. Alvin is not in the least pleased, so work against Hutton, in Carson and Ari. You're a Hutton trucker, so get the hell out of there. We have two systems, LHS340 and LP24510, that are both far too high at 74%. So grow your hair a bit, pull on your drain pipes, skin up a spliff, and return them back to the groovy 60s, please. Alas, two of our litter are in need of a bit of love this week and perhaps a tickle behind the ear. Wolf 1481, yes that's right, where you're all shooting the crap out of things at the weekend, and Wolf 359. Both have reached that sad stage of abject resignation that are in the mid-thirties, so help them get through it by running missions. There are two nice shiny stations in Wolf 359 with lots of juicy missions, so it's not that difficult. The third system, also going through the mid-thirties crisis, is Barnard Star which has both a civil war and an election this week. Neither of these involve Hutton, but they are locking up 50% of the system influence, so it's difficult to do much about our own flagging state until those are over. However, if you do want to pootle around in Barnard Star and want to give Ten Fleet a poke in the nadgers whilst you're at it, they are losing their election for third place 3-0. So help out by running election missions for Barnard Star Alliance. When it's over, get in there and boost Hutton influence so that we don't constantly have the other factions bickering with each other, locking up the inf. Oh, and give Ten Fleet another kick in the crotch for good measure. Speaking of crotches, an, um, situation has arisen arisen in George's pants. There has been a swelling of nefarious activity and the phrase, I've come a long way to relieve you of your load, is being heard a little too often. That's right, folks. It looks like we have pirates in pants' pants, and George, being the very model of a modern Major General, looks like he caught it from Wolf 124 earlier in the week, where pirates are also rampaging about, so get in there and make those thieving scum walk the plank. Reputation aside, there are no rings, hazardous zones, or resource sites in George's pants, and the nav beacon is pretty quiet so earn bounties elsewhere and cash them in at Zamka Platform. 
Last week's infrastructure failure in AVIC was dealt with quickly and efficiently, and once again, there are top-rated influence missions to Y0855714. So well done there to those who shipped in water purifiers, power generators, and HE suits. It's slightly more difficult as Bruce Prospect, the Sal Station, is 2,000 clicks in the outback and only has medium pads. Brace yourself, shrimpy, and chuck another sheila on the barbie. Do not adjust your set. Out in Colonia, King Hanky has things under reasonable control, but in case of doubt with data drops, etc., contact him directly. We're never sure which of the Hanky clones to contact, eventually. In summary, there has been a little bit more going on this week, with a few bits of grit working their way into the exquisite, finely tuned oyster that is the Hutton BGS. So, listening, you horrible lot, priorities are stand still on the back there. Eyes front. Yes, you. Number one, get us out of Carson and Ari. Two, if you want to kill things, kill pirates in George's pants and Wolf124. If you want to trade things, run Hutton Influence Mission in Wolves 1481 and 359. And thirdly, keep an eye on Barnard's star for the war and elections to end in the next day or so, then boost Hutton Influence as required. Parade! Wait for it! Dismissed! Now it's time for news of events organised and led by you, the community. First, a word about last weekend's small ship bounty hunting event, organised by Commander Venetia. The whole thing was as smooth as Wotherspoon's delivery, and apparently they didn't lose a single ship. Well, just one. Commander Venetia arrived for the event and realised that he had nearly three million in bounties, which he said had come from somewhere elsewhere in the galaxy. A likely story. Still. He did redeem himself by allowing everyone to blow him up and claim the bounty. This was a good example of a team driven operation and thanks go to Venetia for organising it and for operating healing beam lasers alongside Evil Homer 40, the Cleaner 80 for firing repair limbers at the right time, Rampage 737 for the use of his fleet carrier and Grizzrise Heart Eater for organising the PC side. The ever reliable Elite Racers have an event. This Sunday, the 28th of February at 1800 UTC, they will be meeting at the Crucible, a canyon course on TZ Ariates 3C. This will be a core event, meaning eight heats, followed by a main event where the top five races of the day go ahead go head to head for the title of course champion. Details in their Discord channel under bit.ly slash Sunday Crucible. Eros Maidlung and the FTM Isfahan are still wandering drunkenly through the galaxy and should have settled into its location for this week by now or would have done except they're making a small detour to pick up Commander Baxter who seems to have simultaneously got a little bit lost and coincidentally run out of gin. Details on our events page. Saturday 28th at 21 UTC sees the regular CQC Saturday event organised by Commander Venetia. Once again, details are on our events page. And finally, a reminder of King Hanky's bounty hunting in Wolf 1481, starting at 1600 UTC on Saturday. Details are... I'm sure you get the idea by now. If you want your event mentioned here, contact us via Facebook, Discord or email I took part at whatanorbital.com and we'll drum up what support we can. <coughs> And we're back. We're in the studio. We're relaxed. Amelia, that yeah. was unusually... 
what's the word? Um, mm, unusual. Stitchy? No. Um, without, without join. Without join. Without, without join. Yes. That. That. I can't oh, the other that word. I yes. can't remember the magic no. word. Without join. Yes. It's steamless. Oh, yeah, no, that, that's, that's, <laughs> didn't have it. Didn't have any hot water. We were steamless. No hot water. Steamless. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Screamless. Yeah. <laughs> and 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 well, welcome to our listener. Uh, back to the live show that is Hutton Orbital Live. And thank you very much to the uh, news presenters. We're joined in the studio this evening by the uh, usual motley crew. We have the uh, Harry Bullsack. Good evening, or also known as Commander Palantir. Uh, good evening. And and how are you this week, sir? Absolutely fine, thank you. Absolutely splendid. I've got my jab booked. Now, obviously, the, say. The, 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 the How Are You This Week is also um, is a green room week, isn't it, this week? Oh, yes. So later in the show, uh, we are going to be popping across the green room to say hi to anybody that's in there. We might as well announce it early on in the show here. So if, if you want to tell everybody, if you want to come and join in the green room chat at the end of the show, how do you take part? Well... The way you would do would be to load up TeamSpeak, TeamSpeak 3 client, and point it to the server ts.forthemug.com. Now, it's very important. And... That's not a website address, yeah. is it? Don't, don't do like some people no. do and type that into a browser because uh, it won't work. Well, if you put it, put it into a browser, what actually happens is it forwards you to the download page for the TeamSpeak client. I, unfortunately, I couldn't get them to put a message saying, you idiot, at the same time. Well, that wouldn't have been very trackerish, would it? But it, no, but at least it points you to the right, right place to download it. Yeah. Yes. So when when you arrive um, at the Teamspeak server, what do you do next? You toot along and have a little look down all the list of places you might go and speak, and there's one called uh, Live Broadcast Chat Enabled or Radio Green Room Silent. You can go into either of those and just put your feet up. If different. you're in the live broker, yes, and if yeah. you're in the chat enable one, you could actually speak to the other people who are in there. You, you can wish talk to, to Litho yeah. Breaker or the PBSF Ghost or Commander Tyron or maybe even the Cleaner 80 that we mentioned yeah. earlier who were currently lurking in there. Just avoid mm. the filthy trucker's bar. Yeah. Yes, always. Oh, yes. At all times, in all circumstances, yes. Yeah, or if you do have to go in there, you know, just, just buy the drink and then leave quickly without making eye contact with anybody. It, it, is, it is a dangerous um, place. And wash your hands. Always wash your hands. Yeah. Anyway, well, also joining Commander Palantir in the studio, we have Amelia, who you heard a second ago. Good evening, Amelia. Hello. Good evening. We're going to go into the depths of how you are when we do the green room bit, but um, thank you very much for joining us again. You've got another special Galnet Food Digest later in the show? I do indeed. And anywhere in particular, or are we going to keep it as a surprise? We'll keep it as a surprise. I'm just going to say deliciousness and leave it at that. Deliciousness. Well, I'm hoping yes. your your travels took you somewhere interesting, anyway. And um, it's, it's always interesting. <laughs> well, yeah, yes. And we we haven't we haven't run out of foodstuffs yet, though. I think this one's a bit of an ambiguous one, isn't it? Because it is there are foods associated with it, and but there's I think there's a printing error in the guide, which you're going to tell us about at some point. Yes. Yeah. Um, and then also uh, we have the apology officer. Good evening, hey. apology officer. Hello. I wouldn't say the news was entirely screamless. I often scream into a cushion just when I'm finished <laughs> reading my parts. <laughs> is, is, is that when you lose your way with your finger spaces? Yeah. 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 It's just like, ah. And then I feel much better and I can go on with the rest of the show. Well, it wouldn't be the same if we didn't write something to trip you up at, at least one point during the script. I don't think you need to write stuff to trip me up. <laughs> <laughs> I you, can do that all by myself. You trip up on the cat on the hat, um, yes, especially if he was lying in the doorway. Um, so yes. your your um, article that you helped with, uh, voicing one of the, the two, is from uh, Commander Dog's Breath. Yes, and yes. Commander Dog's Breath um, has had no comms at all on the second leg of the journey. So whereas mm. on the first one, we had loads of regular daily updates. Um, the second one, yes. we've had to wait until they've arrived at the, the second base before we had any information. So how about they get the messages to you? Are they send it by carrier penguin? Well, no. And when they arrive, what they do is they patch into the Wi-Fi provided by the, ah. the, the land base yeah, and to their satellite connection and piggyback right. on the satellite connection up to up to us. Oh, I wanted a carrier penguin. <laughs> Carrier penguin, yes, with a with a with a with a fancy seal. Oh, and you lined them up, you know. Oh, <laughs> so yes, they they they're on to the the second part of the mission. Um, they've got one more base. I think they're going from Mawson to Davis. 
mm-hmm. after that, and then from Davis home again with all of the fuel rats and Canon Interstellar goodies. And then they've got loads and loads of photographs that they can't send us because of the connection that we're going <laughs> to see. We're going to see afterwards of, of what they've been Not getting yet. up to. Yeah, they'll all come in a big winner. But they they did um, they did show us the. Um, uh, picture of the interview as well, which was up on screen when, when it was being read. Of um, oh, that's with, good. With, with their masks on, of course, their covered secure yes. masks. Of COVID Commander Dog Breath and the uh, the uh, the head fuel rat on board, um, who's a very experienced individual. I think they've been awarded a medal that fuel rat as well down in Antar- the Antarctic medal or something, Australian Antarctic medal. Oh, for, nice for, for fuel ratting the Antarctic. Does it have a picture of Alvin on it? Oh no, no, I, I think <laughs> maybe there's an Adelie penguin. Oh, right, okay. But, but not a rock copper. No, they're punks, and they can't dance. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, uh, talking of fuel rats, obviously, our, our resident uh, fuel rat and Hutton trucker extraordinaire, Flossie, is in the studio as well. Hello. We've got a special video from you later, haven't we? Uh, after You've got your bit with the CGs, and then we've got a special video yeah. from you mm. later. Um, yeah. Courtesy of one of our, our favourite uh, Hutton truckers as well, who's, who's sent it in of the, the two of you doing a little bit of an interview. Yeah. Which is which is a good laugh. And CGs, you got lots of news about that this week. Yes, fair bit about well last week's and this week's CGs. Yeah, I mean, I, I you know from from what it it seems like by the time anybody actually woke up and read Galnet, it had all been done. But we'll find out detail on that um, during your your bit. <laughs> and and then of course uh, standing in for Lou Snockers, also known as Commander Deadmeat, who's taking a little bit of a sabbatical whilst his uh, mojo levels are topping back up again. Uh, we have Commander Chicks. Good evening. You know, you sounded a little bit less despairing than the deadbeat did when he was re- when he reads all of that stuff out. I, I thought it was a reasonable impersonation of a grumpy northerner. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think you're talking about Rampage. Anyway. northerner. No, I don't, no, I don't know. I think he might class himself as Midlands, maybe, or north mm. north north of south, as opposed to middle of north, or you know what I mean. Mm. <laughs> um, but the, there's lots of, lots of detail in there now um, Commander Chicks if anybody wanted to find out those kinds of bits of information like what should I do today other than watching this again on YouTube afterwards what website would they go to to find out what state we're in well they can go to hot dot for the mug uh, dot dot and look at the Hutton Helper uh, go on the Hutton Helper page which I don't have open at the moment and on the left-hand side of the page are, is a summary of all our systems. Um, I actually tend to use Inara um, because it allows me to sort um, in order of influence and it helps me get to uh, details in systems. Oh, yeah, I mean, you need, you need lots and lots more detail than, yep. than your average yep. hut and trucker needs. Yeah, yep. This is the, the sure. hot.forthemug.com is very much an at-a-glance reference. If, oh, if it... If it's in the right, if it's in the correct color, then don't worry about it. And if it, if it's in a horribly warning color, then quick, quick, do something about it. But we had a question from uh, Facebook the other day from somebody who said, "Wouldn't it be lovely if, like, somewhere on the website, it showed you which systems needed data?" <laughs> it does. That it does. Sounds like a great idea. Yeah, it does. <laughs> it's such a good idea. We thought of it ages ago. Yes. Um, yes. If you look at the Hutton Helper, it's in the top right-hand corner. And it it doesn't say in which particular uh, order of um, urgency the systems need data. It's all alphabetical. But so don't go to AVIC because it's always at the top. Choose one of the other systems. Um, yeah, well, actually, it's systems got, it that counts require down, exploration. It yeah, is it, there. It, it counts down as you deliver. So if you've done AVIC or it's been done, that number will go down. So next to it yep. is how many individual sales you need to make, like of individual systems you need to make to that system. As you sell, That's so right. if you're running the Hutton Helper, that number will go down. Refresh mm-hmm. the page. So if somebody else it has will. done it, then the numbers will go down during the week. Yeah, the, one of the questions was about dropping off at Yang Orbital. Please don't drop off at Yang Orbital. It's. Uh, Kind of through a bit of a hot flush uh, Narnia at the moment, and I'm yes. trying to get the influence down. So yes, if you have got data inbound and you want to know where to put it, then put it in the top right. I mean, yes, wherever the top right tells you to do. That's right. Yep. Um, and uh, I mean, other than that, there's sort of been all sorts going on this week. Obviously, Flossie's covered it during the the news article, or Norma did, but masquerading as Flossie. Uh, loads and loads of events going on. Lots and lots of little events at the moment. There aren't any really big Hutton events, but there are lots and lots of little ones. Um, Commander Venezia and team seem to be very busy with their CQC as well. 
Uh, it's been mm. a long time since we last did one of those. Um, now, um, Commander Palantir, mm. uh, I've got a note here uh, about a particular commander who's done particularly helpful things. Yes, that would be Commander The Cleaner 80, who, who's been splendid chap giving away fuel to fleet carrier owners, going around topping them up all over the place. Just you know, oh, a ton or two of tritium of for each one. Yeah, you know, just little, little yes, just, just enough to, to do it. Yes, and th this person is splendid, and we actually have the Cleaner 80 with us live today. Are you there, Hello? the Cleaner 80? Oh, no, we, 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 have, we have a signal. We don't know if it's coming through clearly. Let's, let's turn the Cleaner 80 up a tiny bit. Are you there, the Cleaner 80? Hello. Oh, you're there, oh. you're there. And how are you, the Cleaner 80? I mean, are you exhausted from all this tritium hauling? Yeah, it's been dirty, but I've managed to plough for them all. We're waiting for more for when the next bounty hunt event comes up. So and and how, how many fleet carriers have you managed to top off there all on your own? All of the Hutton aligned carriers that were here are now up. 100%. All of them. I mean, that's the about... ones in Wolf 1481. I mean, that's, that's, that's about six, isn't it? So, where, um, where, on, where on earth are you finding all this tritium? I mean, are you digging it out of rocks with your bare hands? Near enough, yeah. <laughs> near enough. Well, uh, uh, Amelia will be a fan. Amelia is our, our resident huge fan of mining operations. So, uh, yeah, Amelia will be very, very impressed with the um, with, with the loading up there. Um, well, uh, th thank you so much for doing that. Obviously, on behalf of all the commanders who you've loaded up, um, th they've sent us lots of messages saying, you know, isn't the cleaner 80 a, a top trucker? Um, now, Commander Palantir. Yes, sir. Top truckers mm -hmm. who do things for other truckers. Yes, the, there is a tradition. The most, there. the most splendid of the most splendid. The most splendid of the splendid. Well, what, what is what is the tradition though? If they, if they're nominated by fellow truckers for doing silly things, they achieve the ultimate accolade. What the ultimate accolade that has a they, they, get, to, they a get to give Alvin anyway. a belly rub. There you go. Yes, they get to give <laughs> Alvin <laughs> a belly rub. Yep. No, the, the one with the handle this time. Oh, the one with the handle. Yes, so um, Commander the Cleaner 80, we would be delighted if you would accept on, on our and uh, Hutton and Alvin's behalf one of the very, very, very rare, genuine Hutton mugs. Oh, wow, thank you. I'm honoured. No, no, no problem at all. I mean, you know, everybody keeps asking, what do I have to do to get a Hutton mug? And, and the answer is, well, you've got to earn one. And you can't nominate yourself. You've got to be nominated by the people, which you have been nominated by the people for going above and beyond. So it's our absolute pleasure to um, to say, yes, we will be sending you a genuine Hutton mug uh, as a thank you present from all of us here at Hutton and those people you've been loading up as well. And uh, and well done. Thank you. It's a pleasure. Yeah, well, um, <laughs> if you if you want to email us email us offline with a, with a couple of details, and then the very good Commander Palantir there will will sort of wrangle the, the dispatch monkeys into into shape and um, get them packaging things up with with brown tape and sending off to you in in one piece, not two pieces with a handle separate for a DIY job. Um, and mm. uh, you know, give, give us because of time is being what they are. Give us uh, you know a week or so to sort that out. But yeah, send us an email at I took part at Hutnorbital com. And we will send you over your very own hat and mug as a, as a thank you for helping out. And don't thank us too soon. You haven't seen it yet. <laughs> <laughs> you haven't seen what else we're going to put in it. <laughs> you know, you know hat and mugs are rare things. But we've got a strange situation this week, um, as you may have heard during the, the news articles above, because it's not just a one mug week. Oh, no. Uh, apology officer, you, you, were, you yes. had the pleasure of reading out the article earlier. I did. It's a two mug week, isn't it? It's a two mug week. I'm scrolling up to get the names, but yes, yes. it's a two mug week. <laughs> so we had a we had a, we had a phone call from a, a commander earlier in the week. Who, yes, uh, and of course, when, when you do the oh, I really need to you know talk to you on a on a video call. You think, oh my goodness, somebody's offended somebody. Oh, we've got we've got a, you know an admin job to do, and this this actually turned into one of those really pleasant admin jobs. Did you think you were in for a kicking? Oh, I did. I, I thought we <laughs> popped up somewhere. It was a complaint about the show or something. But no. Um, so do, do you want to sort of name drop the the, the commander who made the nomination no, again? No, and, let me just. And, yeah. We need to look on him. I'm going back through this because I don't know. I only can remember one of the names, and I think it's the nominator rather than the nominee. 
Well, the, the nominator, I'll give you the nominator well, while you look it up. That was Scooby Loo. Scooby Loo, yes, who has been a Scooby-Loo trucker for a nominator. long time. Yes. Uh, la, 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 la. No, uh, insertion, no. Uh, mug insertion, smashy mug, yeah, indisposed, oh, got mods. No. Oh, that doesn't look good. So, so, ah, Commander, named Happy Rubio. Who we mentioned, Commander Palantir, just the other day for getting a hut and decal, I think. For, for we the, did, the splendid, did get a hut splendid and decal. person. Got, yes, yes. And uh, the mayor should remember because it was mayor's mouth that uttered the words. The words, <laughs> yes. Commander so, Happy Rubio. Yeah, obviously the the words will have gone from the script out of the mouth with, without anything in between. But script yeah. to mouth, the airwaves gone. So, so once again, <laughs> having having received a a a nomination from Commander Scooby Lou. Um, and, and you know, I say every word of the news is the truth. It's just dressed up in in sort of Hutton terms. But uh, Scooby Lou's been a bit under the weather in hospital, undergoing surgery and all sorts. Uh, he's okay with us sharing this information. I did have a message from saying, you yeah, know, it's cool, you know, talking about it. Um, but uh, Commander Halfbreed Rubio has gone above and beyond in helping, you know, I say helping look after um, Scooby Lou from from a distance, actually from across the other side of the Atlantic, has been uh, doing their very very best to make sure that Scooby is being well looked after has some company and isn't going mad in hospital um and i think as we said during the broadcast um helping look after fellow pilots in their darkest hour is absolutely the most worthy of, of things you can do as a hutton trucker so we are absolutely delighted to hand out a hutton mug a second hutton mug this week to that commander as well so so yes is it, true that, is it true that he sent his? Is it true that he sent his own toe to be transplanted on a Commander <laughs> Scooby Lou? Oh, he chopped, <laughs> Even though he hadn't lost the toe, he just felt he had to send something. Well, he's he's, he's definitely done done something to be worthy of attention. And yeah, I, I do believe I did get a message from Scoob earlier that Scoob has now been released from hospital after a multi week stay and many surgeries. Oof. And um, Scooby Lou is actually back home and recuperating from various surgeries uh, as we speak, and may even be tuned in. Oh, that's good. We don't know, it's but good that, he, yeah, good that he's home. Not that he's tuned well, in. Well, God I'm, help I'm him. waving he's anyway. Look, look, waving. Yeah, I'm waving. See, hey, yeah, hey, yeah. The, yeah, yeah the, the difference is, I'm waving my hand. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I, I'm waving, but I'm not using all of my fingers. So, so, to, so to boil it down, it's obviously you know you can't nominate nominate yourself for a hut and mug, and you can't say if I do this, will I get one? All that has to happen is that um, you have to do something. Utterly, utterly truckerish, and somebody else has to notice it and tell us. And and I mean, you do need to give us the you know the, the full lowdown as to why you can't just say, well, you know, my mate John's just a top bloke, so he should get one. It actually needs to be above and beyond. And we feel both of these, uh, the cleaner eighty and uh, half breed Rubio, have gone above and beyond to help everybody else out, and therefore are utterly deserving. Especially with the whole tour donation thing. Oh, it was an arm and a leg. I heard. Yeah, but the leg had a foot attached to it. <laughs> well, yes. Foot attached to it. <laughs> yeah. So I'm right. <laughs> and, a, absolutely. Um, so does anybody have any other news from uh, Bits and Bobs and what's been going on for this week before we move on to the Galnet news and Flossie and the other Bits and Bobs? Uh, ooh. Small ship bounty hunting was fantastic fun. I don't know who made it along on Saturday from PC side, but it was a giggle on the Xbox. Yeah, I, I understand. I understand that there was much carnage. Yes, oh, and none of it was us. No, none of it yeah, was you. None yeah. of it was us. That's the that's the outstanding memory of uh, of this hotbox event is that it was a hotbox event and none of us died. Well, yeah, I mean, not not even sort of an accidental sort of ship to to scenery incident. No, none of that. And malice was there. And malice was there, and it didn't go malice. wrong. Malice was there, and the the, the the turrets didn't go for him. Well, oh, crikey. Um, you lot must have, No apologies, either. I mean, that's sort of no, disappointing. No, it's, it's, it's slightly dull, but yeah. We even uh, even Shoreside Customs got landed in the fleet carrier without you and me shooting them. Yeah. Well, we um, talk, talking of incidents, though, we did have a minor incident in the Hutton Games room earlier in the week um, when I, I did uh, get on board a flight with our very own Rampage. Um, this was an atmospheric flight, I, I might add, at which point halfway through the flight, um, he realised he'd turned the engine off. And we went from <laughs> being, uh, you know, uh, an aircraft gracefully flying through the air into a, basically a glorified dart. Um, nice. I have to give you, you, give you, do, realize, sorry, you, do, you do realise that that laugh 
from Flossie there was a <laughs> what's so funny about that then turning yeah. your engine off <laughs> yeah. yeah you know be careful here be careful here Vante Uwek I'm in reverse ground. yes um, <laughs> anyway so so yeah Ellie very calmly before we plummeted into the ground uh, restarted all the engines and got us going again and um, managed to land at his destination without further incident but there were a few grey hairs from back in the passenger cabin I can tell you when he did that one <laughs> especially as I had the flight manual in my hands and he didn't have it in his so um, <laughs> you can tell it's bad if he takes his flat cap off and mops his brow with it you know it was a bad one no, I think he was chewing on it, going <laughs> as we were plummeting rapidly <laughs> towards the ground. But um, yeah. yeah, so does, it's, he, it's, does he see if a commode fitted it? Um, no, but it I understand. He, yeah, it he, does now. Yeah. He has the very tight ankles on his trousers. Uh, yeah, he, I was going to see socks in, which means it, it, it didn't leak. That's okay. I was going to see find out the hard way that no, it doesn't have a commode on it. <laughs> no. Anyway, so um, well, that's been that's been our week. We're obviously going to have a bit more of a chit chat over in the green room with those people that are in there. Um, it is time to sort of hand over to the the rest of the bits of the show. Um, so the first thing we're going to get to is um, it's quite a long one. This one, isn't it? it? It's lots and lots and lots of Galnet news, uh, as provided by Commander Wotherspoon and of course Beetlejuice. So uh, sit back. You don't need to take notes on this bit and enjoy. Galnet News Digest, 25th of February 3307. We read the news so you don't have to. In this week's news, Cafe Nero and Odyssey delays. Very cool narrative. PS permits procured. Cafe Nero and Odyssey delays. Information has emerged this week that, unbelievably, at least one commander already has one of the fabled Odyssey permits, which gives him the ability to land on planets with thin atmospheres, get out of his ship and walk about, to scan for and catalogue new biological data, to buy new and interesting weapons, to take missions on foot and to blow holes in strangers he's never met. He's allowed to do the killing part because he has a bigger Peggy than most commanders, but nobody really knows why he's been granted a landing permit before everyone else. The commander in question is Commander Café Nero. Many people think his name is due to his love of coffee, but it's not. It's because he likes to play the fiddle while the galaxy burns. Rumours say he has been planning a heist at one of the new settlements, but other commanders are powerless to intervene without the Odyssey permit. Commander Café Nero has been feeding back tiny snippets of information about what it's like to walk about on planets. It's very good, he said, in response to questions. He also revealed that there are toilets in space, and on planets of course, although he's not yet tried flushing one. On a rocky ice world, so he says, you can see the glittering specks of quartzite in the sand. We'll no longer see barren dead wastes, we'll see new, exciting and infinitely variable ecosystems. He's the first commander to visit Pomesh 2C using the new mapping tools that come with the Odyssey permit, and while it looks different, he says that the planet remains stunningly beautiful, with stunning deep craters and lovely canyons. It looks, he says, insane, and most certainly not as bald as an Arthur's head, after all. In terms of security, Commander Café Nero says you can walk around freely unless you do something that you shouldn't. If you're wanted, you need to steer clear of security guards who may politely ask if they can scan you and equally politely gun you down if they find you're wanted. The penalty for littering is death. There are, says Commander Café Nero, a plethora of new mission types, some of which will get you wanted by the local security forces and not in the nice way. When asked about encountering Thargoids, he asked what we wanted to know about Thargoids, but he didn't tell us anything. He hasn't tried standing in the wash of an engine to see if it's harmful, but he can confirm that being run over by an SRV is very, very painful. 
He can also confirm that commanders who have not paid for their Odyssey Pass and who land on airless planets will not be able to see commanders who have the pass. This is because commanders with the walking around pass will be allowed to do more grown-up things, like shooting at each other, that Horizons commanders may not be old enough to witness. Commander Kaffi Nero is capturing footage of his visits to the new worlds of Odyssey, with the intention of starring in a documentary holovid of his adventures, which, if all goes well, could hit the galactic cinemas as early as next month. There's a big but under all of this, though. Commander Kaffi Nero has been using the pre-alpha version of the Odyssey primate. In fact, he says it's not even the pre-alpha. Demonstrating what a git he isn't, he tried to explain that it's a branch of a trunk, but he clearly didn't have his Dyson biological scanner to hand to scan either the branch or the trunk. The pre-pre-alpha he was using still needs lots of things added to it. For example, the correct procedure for reassembling dead humans has not yet been finalised, something commanders are likely to want ironed out before they submit themselves to the rigours of the planetary walkabout. So this pre-pre-pre-alpha experience might not be quite the same as the final experience. And judging by these things that haven't been decided yet, the date for the release of the Odyssey getting out and walking about permits to all commanders who want them might possibly be delayed a bit longer. Who knows? But it will be worth waiting for. Remember those toilets! Very cool narrative. Told me the Seer was in action this week, making predictions about future events in the galaxy. There will be a very cool thing in three acts, and if you're not there, you miss it apparently. We think this might refer to a play. Plays have acts, and, and if you're not there, you miss them. Memorials would be coming to the galaxy, not the Tyanisla orbital graveyard yet, but beacons that will replicate their data. So you can read the words written in memoriam in a number of locations dotted around the galaxy. Buckyballers are doing another drag strip challenge at Quarters Base, apparently, and the Comfy Cannon Cruise has been announced. If you join that expedition, you'll be taken by luxury fleet carrier on a 400,000 light year cruise to every known type of life, every stellar phenomenon, and everything that has ever excited a member of the Cannon Interstellar Research Group in the galaxy, over a three to four month cruise itinerary without having to charge your frameshift drive once. <laughs> That's assuming the fleet carrier owner doesn't go rogue and start forcing you to mine void opals for him in some remote location. The fleet carrier Konzu will be departing the Verati system on March the 14th, 3307, at 1500 Galactic Standard Time. PS Permits Procured Campaigning news outlet Galnet News Digest has chalked up another victory this week, persuading the Pilots' Federation to sort out a long-standing problem in double-quick time. Up to a third of commanders using the PS4 flight control system have been reporting for several months that they were unable to land on planets despite having the planetary approach suite correctly installed. Your Super Soroway Galnet News Digest reported about this on Tuesday, encouraging those affected to write in to the Pilots Federation to complain. And within a day, the Pilots Federation, under the immense pressure brought to bear on them, by both our listeners, had found and fixed the problem. Now at last, all PS4 commanders can land on planets, deploy their SRV, discover they don't have an SRV, return to a starport to buy an SRV, fly back to the planet and land again, deploy their SRV properly this time, drive around an abandoned settlement, get a wheel wedged in the corner of a building, Spend 20 minutes trying in vain to free the SRV, self-destruct the SRV, and find themselves back in orbit, just like all the other commanders. Let's cross now to Commander Betelgeude, who's about to mark the successful conclusion of our single-handed campaign by landing her PS4 Cobra Mark IV, which was supplied to her by the Pilots' Federation, on the surface of Pamesh 2C. Commander Betelgeude, can you hear me? I'm here, Wotherspoon. Yes, I'm about to land on Pamesh 2C. The canyons are spectacular there, aren't they? What's it like to see a planet close up 
for the first time. It's really exciting. I'm using the famous PS4 DualShock control system. It provides a sort of haptic feedback that the Thrustmaster just can't deliver. Beautifully engineered, with all the important controls conveniently laid out. It's like it's made for my hand. Oh my god, I just tried to deploy my landing gear. The button's mapped to boost. Well, it sounds like something must have gone wrong there. We'll obviously send a search party. Right, well, never mind. That was this week's Galnet News. Galnet News. Jude read the news. So you didn't have to. No, I'm, I'm, I'm sure we, we, I've heard that story before. Anyway, check it out with the, with the copyright lawyer. Yeah, check it out. Anyway, thank you, Commanders Wotherspoon and Beetlejude. Never a dull moment when those two are around. It's over to Flossie now with the CG News. It's Flossie. It's Flossie, it's Flossie, it's Flossie, and the community goes. Hello, Flossie here with this week's Community Goals News. First of all, last week's CG was completed about 1,500 UTC on Sunday. 5 million and 1 tonnes were collected by 10,522 contributors. Seems a lot of commanders really wanted that FSD module. I don't think fleet carriers made a big impact on the result, just a lot of commanders taking part. As mentioned in the original CG text, if the initiative is successful, Sirius Corporation will gift the module and the permanent Sirius system permit to the top 75% of pilots. The module will be placed in storage at the Ashby City Starport in the Light and Star system by the end of 26th of February 3307. Also, Sirius Corporation will make the fully engineered long-range, fast boot size, five frame shift drive <laughs> available for purchase at all human technology brokers. This will probably also start on the 26th of February and for the first two weeks will be at discounted prices. As the CG reached Tier 5, four tiers above Tier 1, the discounted prices will be Data Mind Wake Exceptions 10 instead of 18, Tellarium 10 instead of 26, Electrochemical Arrays 10 instead of 26, and Chemical Processors 12 instead of 28. There are no limits to how many you can buy, providing you have enough materials and storage space. Now on to this week's CG, the Defence of the Galactic Summit. The Federation is working with Sirius Corporation to offer bounty hunting opportunities to protect the diplomatic conference. The first Galactic Summit has officially opened at Patterson Enterprise Station in the Sirius system. Temporary permits have been issued to all arriving delegates and commanders for the three weeks of its term, although these do not apply to fleet carriers. Sirius Corporation CEO Lee Yong Rui announced the data supplied to us in January revealed several unanticipated threats, putting additional strain on our Navy and security forces. 
Working with the generous support of the Federation, we have placed bounties on all wanted ships to ensure delegates' safety. Pilots defending the Sirius system will be rewarded for handing in bounty vouchers at the spirit of laylapse. If Tier 1 is reached, the top 75% of participants will receive the Viper Mark III Acceleration White Paint Job. The top 25% will additionally receive the Viper Mark III Acceleration Gold Paint Job. These should be processed and accessible by the 6th of March 3307. Thanks to the generosity of the Federation, the top 10 participants will receive a Federal Assault Ship. The ship will be delivered and stored at Ashby City Starport in the Lighting System by the 6th of March 3307. The joint initiative will run for one week, after which the Sirius Corporation will partner with the Empire to provide the needs and security for the conference. Sorry, to provide for the needs and security of the conference. And that's it for this week's CG News. Thank you, Flossie. Wow, another bounty hunting CG. Uh, it's like they really don't want you to take part. Is it? Is it because you normally win all the big prizes? I mean... I'm sure the Pilots' Federation wouldn't treat their favourite pilot badly. Maybe they're just trying to tempt you into putting on your battle armour. Anyway, we have a message from the Cleaner80. He says, Can you please mention that I'm calling Wolf1481 home and will refuel any hot and fuel rat FC that turns up? Time now to go over to the Apology Officer for this week's Sports Report. Welcome to this week's Hutton Sports Report. The helper is still broken, but Antares Fusion is beavering away to get up and running again. In the meantime, we can have a bit of stats-free fun. The Hutton Sports Report is sponsored by the Hutton Helper, the only third-party resource to come with a selection of random bolts and screws, which you will only find after assembly. This week's galaxy-wide events are the Beetlejuice Supernova Sweepstake, the one Jump Beyond Wavezi SG-YD0 Pro Celebrity Shield. The Raxler First Planetary Scan Cup. The I Landed on the Thargoid Home World and All I Got Was This Lousy T-Shirt and Severe Chemical Burns Trophy. The Guardian AI Invitational. The I Flew to Hutton at Orbital in 45 Minutes and Here's the Proof Forum Challenge. Uh, as it turns out, results of all these events are pending. So... We'll move on to the classified results and double A never goes into whole M. Stay out of my light and you get double points if you hit your thumb and don't swear. Uh, no teletype machine again this week. The gramophone repairman has had to order up some new valves. Luckily, Harry Balzac is receiving sports supports over the wireless and is typing them up for me. Uh, he's enthusiastic and everything, but the way he sticks his tongue out the side of his mouth and squints over his glasses at the paper isn't inspiring me with much confidence. You remember the return bar this time, won't you? Won't you? Right. Oh, here we go. First it. I can't read this. It's upside down. Oh, oh, right. Thanks. Okay, so. Stenhouse Muir. Two. Stilling Albion. Three. Wraith Rovers. One. Montrose. Three. Queen of Kokari, 2. Wolf 25, under 11s, 2. Carson and Ari Kittens, 1. Lighten 145-141 Blue Bottles, 2. Epsilon Eridani Rangers, 3. Epsilon Indy Bourbonites, 2. LP245-10 Badgers, 4. LHS 340 Rovers, no. Dynamo LP525-39, 2. LP532-81 Buccaneers, 2. 
Oh, so that's a fixed no subject to change at short notice and are not legally binding. Name, names may have been changed to protect the guilty. You know that toilet, that's toilet paper you're typing on, don't you? Where did you get that from anyway? I thought everybody used the three seashells nowadays. Okay, that's enough. Thank you. Decals this week for Marcus Ezekiel, Carf Pabas, Zephod Bebo, Bewilderbeast, and Damien McCandless, or McCandles, or McCandless. Anyway, please email I took part at Hutton orbital.com and arrange to collect your hut and decal kit, which this week consists of a flat pack decal with instructions in Danish, Chinese and German, an Allen key and some other bits of MDF. We had three hut and runs in the last seven days. The fastest of these was Commander Bitamax at 1 hour, 23 minutes and 59 seconds, which puts him in 89th place overall. Could you do better? Well, it's hard to tell at the moment, but... Why not go to hot.fothermug.com and download or sign up for the Hutton Helper and get your head in the game so your name can be read out live on the wireless. Let's face it, anything has to be better than eating 3D printed hot dogs. You spend a whole afternoon wandering around flat pack for you in the parade at Hutton. That's what clones are for. Anyway, back to the studio. Thank you very much, Mia. I think it's always incredible how you managed to create all, all of this absolutely almost nothing. Well done. <laughs> it's easier when there's no actual facts or stats to get in the way. I always enjoy it more that way. Yeah, well, I'm glad to see you give all your friends a decal. That's the important thing. Yeah. The ones in your gang, yes. I don't have friends. You know that. <laughs> Moving on. Now, we're going to have uh, Gownet Food Digest coming up in a few moments. Uh, but before that, we've got a special treat. We've got uh, a vidcast uh, of our favourite Flossie and our other favourite, Beetlejude. One, one is, they're, they're both artists, but in, in different disciplines. Uh, moving on to our video. Take it away, Mr Pusher of Buttons, please. Hello. Uh, this video is all about Flossie. In a pink conda. So here is a little interview with her. Yes, it's a, it's you in a pink conda. Yes, it is. Yes, it was taken on the, during DW2 in uh, 2019. All the way there and all the way back. <laughs> That's not a ratting ship then. I was set up for ratting because um, that was one of my roles during the oh, expedition. Okay. I don't think I did much of it. Uh, there was a lot of people in the same role and uh, I was never in the right place at the right time. <laughs> but I, I would hope that anyone that's intending to get to Beagle Point would know. What well, exactly, doing. yeah, yeah. I think it's mostly just lapse of concentration when you're out there. Well, it all started <laughs> when I, I saw a call for help on, I think it's on Facebook, uh, from Commander Sellerson. Oh, really? Oh, wow. Yeah. He was um, collecting metal alloys and found after getting a couple that he didn't have any cargo racks on his ship. So he asked if anybody could come and help. So I was actually in the next system. So I said, yeah, I can help you. So I flew down to him. There was a bit of a carry on when my ship suddenly decided to launch and threw me SRV across the planet. <laughs> but once I'd got out of that, I eventually self-destructed because I couldn't get back to him. Oh, no. um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was, oh, it was only, it was only oh. in the SRV. Oh, I see what you mean. So yeah. I was back in the ship and started again. So anyway, I, I landed and uh, babysat his metal alloys where he went to get to cargo back. And yeah, it was just a fairly simple thing. But afterwards, I just felt so good. I thought, yeah, it's really give me a buzz that. Just being able to help somebody in a, a practical way. And I just suddenly had this thought, oh, well, there's another way I could help people. I could be a fuel rat. <laughs> You've been playing Elite since the start? I have, yes, yeah. Well, since the start of Elite Dangerous. My husband yeah, yeah. used to play back in the 80s and I used to watch him. <laughs> but uh, I never had any ideas for trying myself at that time. <laughs> 
Uh, and yet oh. now, <laughs> you are, oh, you are legendary. <laughs> I have had the uh, first limpet on 64, I think it is now, which isn't an awful lot, really. Not as many as some people oh, yeah. <laughs> who really? seem to spend the whole life doing it. Um, I'm a bit of a part-timer, really. I sort of just come and go as the fancy takes me. I might I might go for months without oh, yeah. doing any, and then do a few in one week. Yeah, that that picture uh, was actually taken on the far side of Sagittarius A. Um, oh right, in the Micah's Hope area, north of that A. Yeah, and so, is it um, is it yours? <laughs> yes, it is. Yes, it's my system. <laughs> Got my Yay. name all over it. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. So if yeah. we go out there, we'll spot it. Oh, definitely yes. There was um, a CG coming up. The Frontier were asking for ideas for rare goods. Yeah. And a group of them at, at Glavecon got talking and came up with the idea of the Hutton mug as a rare good. That is good. So they put forward that idea and it was accepted. And we had the CG to get the Hutton mug at Hutton Orbital. Yeah, I was in that CG. <laughs> I helped. I helped. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'd set off and point my ship at Hutton, then go off and have a walk or something, <laughs> come back just in time for it to arrive. Oh, yes, you can pretty uh, much make dinner, can't you? You can, yeah. Yeah. It's great. <laughs> so, so that was, you know, that I was listening to Hutton Optical Radio, and uh, of course it continued after the CG, which wasn't the intention at the time. <laughs> was it just, was Hutton Optical Radio only planned for the CG? Yeah. Yeah. Oh fab! <laughs> it's been going so I believe while. yes, it was just for the CG, and then Pitt wanted it to continue, so it's still later. going now. <laughs> and then you take part in all of the stuff, and you are integral to the show now because <laughs> you tell people what to do. Well, uh, yeah, for the CGs, yes. Uh, on the, our first big sort of convoy, I had a couple of accidents where I actually crashed into the star that I was trying to scope. <laughs> well, we all do that. Well, yes, we do, don't we? Yes, we do. Well, because I, oh, I crashed it you know, a couple of times. It happened, and they've never let me forget it. <laughs> years and years later. And you know, well, of course, it's now in the song for the mug. It is. Plot, plotty always <laughs> seems to crash into the sun. And I think that's another reason I decided to become a fuel rat because I wanted to prove that I don't always crash into the sun. <laughs> 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 oh dear. Good evening. This is Amelia Hawk reporting for the Gullnet Food Digest. I try the galaxy's most rare and dangerous foods, so you don't have to. While many of the rare items listed in the guidebooks are sold as foods, there are a collection that are listed as edible, or are related to edible items. Some are medicines, some are the flora and fauna that are part of the rarity of a particular trade item. This week, we're opening the jewellery box and looking at the sparkly things hidden inside. Classed as a metal, though that's a misnomer, as these items are found alongside the precious metals of the galaxy and often adorning the necklace, uh, necklines of the richer and more flamboyant and retro of the Milky Way's more well-to-do. Head to a formal imperial reception or dig through your wealthy aunt's box of family treasures and every now and then you'll stumble upon something truly rare and quite beautiful. In the system Helvetij, I'm going to say that again, Helvetij, H-E-L-V-E-T-I-T-J, stands a terraformed Earth-like world. It's smaller than the one in Sol, noticeably fatter and warmer, 
the surface covered in tropics as water is abundant in the atmosphere. Humanity has set up a habitation on what little higher ground there is, the mountainsides and tops that rise steeply over the landscape. The atmospheric pressure is high, but the altitude gives the human constitution a respite from the pressures at sea level. Below them, the flat landscape is covered in river deltas. No watery torrents and fast-flowing currents. The rainfall makes its way to the sea in a leisurely fashion, slowing as it passes mangrove trees. During the terraforming, the early settlers were at pains to provide natural methods to improve the planet for human habitation. Algal blooms were abundant. The sudden growth of them starving the waters below of nutrients for years, leaving them ol oligotropic and spores from the blooms making the air toxic. The solution was a creature normally found around the coast of Africa, the mangrove oyster. Capable of living both in and above the water for extended periods, it actively removes nitrates from the water cleaning and filtering it, and helping reduce the incidence of algal blooms. Crassostrea tulipa, or the mangrove oyster, found the conditions perfectly suited to its biology, latching onto the mangrove roots and providing much-needed filtering of the water. As with any oyster, small impurities find their way into the shells, and to protect itself, the oyster slowly coats them, forming natural pearls. Due to the naturally occurring minerals in the waters, unlike on Earth where the pearls are pale, these can form all colours of the rainbow. In copper and sulphur-rich areas you get vivid blues and indigos, and across the landscape you'll find everything from dark midnight black pearls to yellows, reds, and bright vivid white. Of course, along with the naturally occurring pearls, the oysters themselves are considered a delicacy, and it is that delicacy that I'm here to try. The guidebook over the centuries has printed and reprinted the same error, that the pearls themselves are edible, and that couldn't be further from the truth. As these oysters have evolved, the impurities in the water mean that almost every oyster you open has a natural pearl inside, made and coloured with impurities in the water. They grow to huge sizes over the decades, the largest found weighed over a ton, with a pearl inside the size of a ripe melon. The meat of the oyster itself, though, is unusually pure, free of contaminants, heavy metals and impurities, and served as delicacy as it is on earth, a rare delight. A dash of lemon, a sprinkling of vochuong chili powder, and as they say, down the hatch. Three chews, then swallow. The coastal fringe where they're found isn't as salty as it is on Earth, so they have a milder and more delicate flavour. Battered and deep fried, served with a sweet chilli sauce, they are meaty and firm. A witch hole Kobe beef um, and Helvetich oyster pie is gloriously rich and aromatic, and aromatic. We still can't get away from the idea that they're an aphrodisiac. But as you can only try these if you're outrageously rich, I suspect it's not physical attributes that the Helvetich oyster eaters use to get people in the mood. What's more, with each serving, you're rewarded with a colourful, valuable and beautiful piece of jewellery as a memento. Enough money and you can have a hefty and stunning paperweight on your desk. Rich enough to own a planet? Your bollards outside the entrance can be enormous polished pearls in your own company colours. It wouldn't be the same without a small element of danger. Most of it is through not paying attention. Take the guidebook with a pinch of salt. Do not try eating the pearls themselves, nor if anyone offers you some pearl jam, should you try and eat it. Eating the pearl whole or as a ground ingredient, won't immediately prove harmful. Once it hits the concentrated acids in your stomach, though, it starts a chain reaction that has most unpleasant side effects. Extreme flatulence and 
irrication or burping are the first signs that things are about to go very wrong, followed by thirst, unquenchable thirst as your body slowly desiccates. In 24 hours, your eyes will be sunken, your skin as dry as paper. 24 hours after that, you'll be able to audition for a role in The Mummy. A day after that, well, there'll be nothing left but dust. The calcium chloride it creates when reacting with the hydrochloric acid in your stomach is one of the most potent desiccation agents you will encounter, and you will want to avoid it at all costs. Nearly every oyster you encounter will contain at least one pearl. Every oyster needs checking and preparing before being eaten, as shucking one and gobbling it down without checking will just be the start of a very dry and dusty end. The rarity is also a side effect of the chemical composition of these oysters. Aside from their calcite shells, the pearls are mineral rich and the oysters act as natural miners for those same minerals, used shipboard and on scarabs for much of the synthesis available. They're harvested, mined, and farmed predominantly for their physical rather than aesthetic value. With the settlers now having been established for centuries, the oyster beds are no longer needed as part of the terraforming, with science providing much of the solution previously given by nature. The locals, however, keep a small selection of the most beautiful pearls back to sell in the rare's trading market. And if you're there when they harvest them, you can try the delicacy that is the Helvetich oyster. I'm Amelia Hawke, and to be honest, I'm not a fan of pearl necklaces, but the pie I'm about to sink my teeth into, served with a good Haydn black brew, is just the thing for a hungry Galnet Food Digest reporter. Oh, and um, trust me on the jam. This is Amelia Hawke reporting for the Galnet Food Digest. I shuck it and get it down in one, so you don't have to. Thank you very much, Amelia. So you brought back no some, some souvenirs from, from your last trip then? Yes. Pearl necklaces for all. <laughs> yeah, yeah, all, all round for everybody. How, how generous. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I mean, it, it, it's Just astonishing. Just made me thirsty. <laughs> it, 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 <laughs> astonishing that um, obviously you know you you, you can transplant these these uh, these creatures from the west coast of Africa all the way to a, a foreign planet, and um, they not only thrive but help clean the planet up. And a part of the terraforming process. Just the you know the the it's thought amazing, behind that. It? Yeah, don't use machines. Just use use nature to fix nature. Um, exactly. Yeah, it's brilliant. But obviously, yeah. I mean, we that, thought about taking rabbits to Australia. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, invasive mm -hmm. species and all that, but they they seem to have cleared up the algal blooms. I mean, imagine all those horrible algal blooms and yeah, the toxic spores and everything, and just you know cleaning them up using a tasty morsel and a bit of jewellery. That's you know that's that's what it boils down to. It's nice. Yeah. So um, I mean, go go ahead. I was going to say I was going to recommend oysters with um, shallot and red wine, uh, vinaigrette, and chocolate stout. Oh yeah, oh, it's so good. Some, something about oysters and a decent stout, or the Hyden Black Brew, as you reviewed it a few weeks yes. back now, wasn't it? The Hyden Black Brew. Yes, any any nice dark stout or ale, Hyden Black Brew. I think we we did that just a couple of weeks ago, didn't yeah. we? And and with the, those pies with the uh, the Witch Hall Kobe beef as well is mm -mm -mm. yes, yes. Mm -mm -mm. <laughs> oh, yes. oh I'm, I'm salivating at the very thought. Anyway, well, look, thank you very much for that one. And obviously, this one isn't listed as a food stuff, isn't it? The the rare that they sell in the station, I think it's called Friend Orbital. The station is actually the pearls themselves. They keep the oysters only for people who get down to the planet itself. Yes, yes. Yeah. So you can't buy those ones, but you can buy the um, the Helvetic pearls. pearls. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Um, I think they're about ten thousand credits each. 
Yes, they're not cheap. No, no. But I'm not surprised. I mean, they're, 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 they're all colours of the, the The black pearl, you know, previously reserved for pirate vessels, but, you know, now you can actually go and own your own your own one if you hunt through the hunt through the box hard enough. You, well, you, can, you can put it up in exchange for your fuzzy dice and then, you know, put it in your pirate ship and then call your ship the black pearl. Oh, yeah. No, it, it, Why are they but, expensive? Because they are. Because they are. <laughs> Goodness <laughs> gracious me. You can tell we're getting towards the end of the show. Well, we say we are getting towards the end of the show, but um, we, we ought to pop up and uh, say hi to the team over in the green room, shouldn't we? So we should. Uh, yeah. oh, we're going to give them a warning because they're on about a minute lag from us here. So people in the green room, uh, get ready because what's about to happen is it's about to go all silent and then we'll run open through the door and make lots and lots of noise. So um, Get ready a minute ago. Yes, yes, yeah, absolutely. Uh, Commander Palantir, so if you can do the mm-hmm. um, the, the drag the, the radio feed out and turn the radio feed off in that room, then as soon as you've done that, mm-hmm. I'll jump up there and everybody come and join me. So, uh, yeah, uh, f- fire away and then I'll run upstairs. Done. And I, I've made it through to the, uh, to the green room. Uh, is everybody else coming up as well? I wonder. Here we go. And uh, I can see... Yeah, Commander Chicks has made it. The Ooh, apology hello. officer's stuck. Here we go. No, we'll get the apology officer up here as well. And, of course, Commander Palantir themselves. And we are in the green room. Right. Um, good evening, the green room. And, um, yes, it's, it's at the end of the month again already. Goodness gracious me, it is. I think that's the way the world is at the moment. The, um... Yeah. Well, it is a short month, isn't it? it it's, it's at least yeah. a week <clears throat> shorter than normal, this one. Well, do, I don't you find that the days are very long and the weeks are very short. Absolutely. Well, look, we're going to do. We're going to do. We're going to do the Sorry, usual. Too philosophical. Too, too philosophical for this time. Yeah. Right. Sorry. Hmm. Yeah. I'm, I'm stroking my beard thoughtfully there. Um, well, stroking stroking a cigarette. Take looking you at... all, the length of that beard. It'll take you all bloody night to stroke it. <laughs> yes. Lay it out on the desk in front of me and just work down like you do with. Sort of a... Rather long. <laughs> Sure. Well, that, that's, that's, yeah. well, I don't know what to say to that one, really. Well, look, well, we, we, <laughs> we are, we are going to say uh, hello to everybody in here, and we're going to take turns. And as usually, if I say, is it me? It probably is. Uh, I'm going to start with the first one, and then Commander Palantir. We're then going to go to Amelia, then Flossie, then the chicks. And then round again... You get the idea. Me, so as long, you remember, me, you remember yeah. your order. Yeah. Um, so the first mm-hmm. person I can see in the green room here, and I'm hoping his microphone isn't on really small and far away, but it, it might be. But um, good evening, Commander Aiden. Good evening. Oh, <laughs> Just, oh, he sounds like he's he's inside the machine room. Hang on a second. Over at uh, Hutton Orbital. Turn you down a tiny bit. And how are you, Commander Aiden? Uh, I'm. I've gone up to a different machine room than my usual machine room. Uh, I'm currently. Closer, closer than normal to uh, the port of Southampton. Oh right, okay. Well, it it, it does it does sound like you're warming up your ship's engine there, ready for uh, ready for takeoff. But um, have you been out doing CGs this week or anything fascinating out in the universe? Uh, I went off to do the 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 rare CG and was fortunate enough to just squeak in to, to stay in the top seventy five percent. I probably should have stuck around and put some more. Uh, more of the uh, Grassian beer onto my carrier before I moved, before I went off and shifted everything. But hang on, mind. <laughs> well, at least, at least you took part, was which was which was better better than I managed to do. I was uh, w- way too busy with other things, so I, I missed out. But luckily, of course, you lot have all done the hard work. So hopefully, I can go to a, a human tech broker and go and get the stuff. Well, yeah, uh, that was largely by how I was doing it, um, getting some more grade five double engineered FSDs, um, which was quite shiny. But other than that, uh, I suspect I may miss out on the, um, the bounty hunting, as I'm not going to be back into my home port until probably late on Sunday, and I'm expecting that that to be gone by then. Oh right, well, it um, it sounds like that's going to be uh, that's going to be good fun. Uh, do you have anything else to add for this evening, or uh, uh, any messages from the community? No, for the mug. For the mug. Excellent. Well, uh, I'm going to hand over to the next presenter to introduce, yeah, the next person to be interviewed. Take it away. It's, it, which is me to talk to the lovely Amelia. Hello. How the devil has your your week been? My week has been consumed with testing spices. Mm-hmm. Um, not all successfully, I might add. 
some very interesting outcomes. Um, you mean combinations of spices? Yes, mm -hmm. and quantities of each combination. Um, and I have been kind of um, messing around with, um, yeah, with with cooking. So that that's been fun and and horrifying at the same time. You're, you would you be one of these people who go on Master Chef and say, "Oh, I'm an experimental cook," <laughs> and then watch and then watch everybody's <laughs> eyes roll. Um, yeah, yeah, sure. That... <laughs> experimental, experimental spelt. I've no freaking idea what I'm doing. I'll just bung it in and see what oh, happens. No, I have an idea. I just mm, um, it's just not the same idea as anybody else has ever had <laughs> in the history of the world. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> I have to Somebody has to be first. This it's this is true. Has to be you. Yes. <laughs> well, be, be the per, first person to to decide. Oh, let's take some leaves off the end of a bush. Let's dry them out. Then let's put some water back in them. Now I'll drink that. Why didn't they just chew on the tea leaves in the first place? People have got to do these things. People have got to be pioneers. Well, I think I've said it before. Tea is vital for survival. Mm. I mean, the dinosaurs didn't have tea, and look how they turned out. Well. They, Certainly, that means if I drink tea, will I be proof against any meteors at land? I think that's an important question. <laughs> it's very important, a very, very important question. Yes. So you do all the stupid things with spices so we don't have so to. So you don't have to, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> anyway, um, no, not much has been happening. Lots of cooking, lots of experimenting with spices. Um, some very fun outcomes, some very horrendous outcomes. But um, other than that, it's just for the mug from me. Uh, again, the, the thing with, with, especially with hot spices, the same as with anything to do with any disease, wash your hands. Yes, always, thoroughly wash your hands. Mm -mm, yes. Good. Thank you very much. I will pass over to you. To me. To talk to and someone. I'm speaking to the apology officer. Hello, apology officer. Hello. How are you? I haven't spoken to you in did, minutes. It's not about me. It's about you. Okay. <laughs> How are you? I'm very well, thank you. I've had a busy week. I've been. I've got started on this new CG because I want to get one of the shiny paint jobs. So I'm excited for that. Um, nice. And that's that's kept me busy for most of the afternoon, but I'm I'm doing okay with it. It's bounty hunting, which is a bit new for me, but I've been jumping into wee distress call, uh, distress signals, and pirate activity things, and doing a bit of pew pew, and you know. So you've been pirate hunting. I have been pirate <laughs> hunting and rescuing distressed people. Did you kill any ships called the Dark, the Black Pearl? I don't know. I just killed all the ships that were there. I just, so you, just anything. You, you don't discriminate then. You just kill everything. everything uh, if, if it I happens can... to be a pirate, that's great. Yeah. Uh, if it comes up with that wee red wanted bit, it's a goer. Brilliant. <laughs> Have you been up to anything else? Um, No, really. Stuck in the house most of the week. In fact, stuck in the house all of the week. Um, Been doing a wee bit of uh, an Assassin's Creed game. So I've been playing that, keeping myself entertained for a while. Oh, yeah, um, yeah. Rampaging around England, going, oh, look, I'm in Grimsby. Yay. I'm in Grimsby. <laughs> Yay, Grimsby. <laughs> Yay, Grimsby. <laughs> it doesn't look any different uh, from Saxon England to now. It just looks the same. <laughs> <laughs> and that's been my week. So for the mug. For the mug. Over to Now I Flossie. believe it's me to speak to chicks. How are you? Good evening. Doing? Hi, Flossie. How are you? I'm fine, thanks. How are you? This is the point where you're supposed to say, I'm asking the questions. Mm -hmm. Yep, I'm asking the questions. <laughs> Can I be in charge for a while? <laughs> <laughs> You'll get your chance next to talk to me. <laughs> well, we I thought we were here to talk to guests. <laughs> no, we can talk to each other. Very good. Well, it's just it's, well, the way it fell with guests. all of our names being at the top of the alphabet and all of them being in sort of V's and T's <laughs> and things down the bottom. So. Yeah. It's also sometimes if we have about 30 guests in there, then it's probably best we don't bother talking to each other. But in this case, we can afford to be um, self-indulgent. I think that's the phrase I'm looking for. Mm -hmm. <laughs> nice. So um, I'm talking to you, aren't I? So what have you been doing? Well, as as you know, I did the uh, CG for the yep. shiny frame shift drive, so I'm looking forward. I'll probably pick that up tomorrow. Um, I've been ingratiating myself with um, the factions in Carson and Ari to uh, mm. try to kick off some elections and things to uh, reduce our influence there. 
and I've been learning how to not use VR and go back to a flat screen so I can, you know, and you know what, the, the quality in 2D, in flat screen, is amazing is, compared yeah. with VR. Mm. So I've been, uh, I've been shoot, making some videos, shooting some videos, so I, I wanted to do it in, uh, in 2D, so I was doing that earlier on. Yeah, I do most of my in, in 2D. Mm, mm. I've forgotten how crisp it is. And then yeah. I tried to do something like look at either the left or right panel and turn my head and nothing happens. And I'm going, <laughs> hang on a minute. <laughs> yeah. Well, you can do it so that how yeah. you try to have your keys set up, isn't it? Yep. yep. But, it's on my uh, yeah. Yeah, get yourself uh, yeah one of those nice track IR <clears throat> things. Yeah, it's a it's a it's a temporary move, but uh, yeah, yeah it, it's funny how you get thrown. I say I like <coughs> VR, but I, I can't manage um, you know, things like typing and, and the galaxy map. It's just I don't find it very easy, so I tend to use two D. Yeah, the ga- galaxy map. I'm on the thumbsticks on uh, on the hot ass, so it's it's oh, try pretty to simple. Find, try to find or try to pinpoint a system I find difficult. Hmm. So that's when you're in a hurry, it <laughs> loses your valuable time. <clears throat> yeah, in the in the CG, it's just easier just to bookmark everything and oh, have yeah. them at the top that's, of your bookmarks. Yeah, that's what I do. <laughs> so that's been pretty much my my week. So for the mug from me. Thank you for the mug, and over to you. <laughs> right, I'm done, Harry. Litho breaker, are you? Beep, 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 are you there, Jim? No, no, you missed. You got, me. you got to ask Flossie the same questions now. You see. <laughs> <laughs> it's next on the list, dude. It's your turn to talk to me. Have you? Maybe I'm not in the same order as you. No, maybe not. Maybe not. Anyway, uh, you're, you're interviewing <clears throat> Flossie. Oh, I wrote them all down anyway. That's what I've. So. Uh, stand down, oh. Jim. I don't so, know. good yes, evening, Flossie. Flossie, how are you, Flossie? Um, Flossie, what have you been up to in game this week? Oh, in game. All right, not a lot. <laughs> well, no, what did, have you I been did, doing? I did, I did the CG. Well, yeah, did tell the us, tell us about your exciting other out of game news this week. Uh, well, I, I had my job on Sunday. That's the one. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> um, I still got a sore arm, but other than that, I'm fine. Um, and, so there are two uh, two happy. sore arms in in Hutton truckers. Yeah. <laughs> so um, oh, and I've been playing a lot of World of Warcraft. <laughs> uh, and then of course I had this contact from um, Fatal Jude saying she'd done my picture. Mm. Uh, and, I sent and... it. I sent her a screenshot that I took <coughs> on DW two. And when was that interview done? The actual interview was done yesterday. <laughs> Picture was done before that, of course. Hmm. Um, and she made the video, and then we had the interview, and she inserted bits of the interview into the video. Very good. I, I first saw it on another uh, another page on Facebook. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so... That was quite a surprise when I heard of her and, hmm. and said she wanted to talk to me. Oh, <laughs> really? <laughs> so I hope it sounded all right. It was very good, I thought. I, I've seen it two or three times now. So, yeah, very good. <laughs> oh, goodness. <laughs> it was sort of multi, what do you call it? It's not multimedia, but multi, um, was it pencil, chalk, and was there anything mm, else in there? It seems like chalk, I don't know. Mm. Yeah, I was, so, I was struggling to, like, what's she using there? How's she doing that? Yeah, yeah, a couple of points. It was really good, whatever it was. Mm, very good. So, yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm constantly amazed at people's talent in various uh, genres. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> yeah. Anyway, that's more or less it from me, so I will say for the mug. Well, I'm sorry if I got things out of order. This is well, I think order. I did. I'm not sure. I think I'm in the... This is the order of the world when, when I first did the list. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Right, so, and um, we're back on round, back on uh, round to the next one. No, uh, now it's... Um, you missed out the apologies officers when you did the list Please. before. Oh, oh, was it I? Well, it's the apology officer's turn now, I think, uh, if the apology officer is still there. 
Jeez. Oh my yeah. god. Quick, <laughs> lithobreaker, breaker, cover for me, waffle or something. What have you been doing? Blah, 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 blah. No, uh, who are we interviewing? No, no next, is, next is the Palantir. It's Harry Balls. Yeah. yeah. Oh, is it? Oh, it's oh, yeah. so. Yeah. Oh, look at that. <clears throat> so, at so that. seamless. Um, sure. Fancy on gets Little Breaker. Oh, I know. Sean, I am so sorry. I need you to waffle for about a minute, minute and a half. But what have you been up to? In game, uh, I logged in this evening, uh, went to find somewhere with outfitting, and took a screenshot of a fuel scoop. Uh, ah, for the, new, for, for the news, I'm assuming. Yes, yes, yes. Mm. yes. No, 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 for my collection, because I... For I, my I collection. One of the fuel I, scoop. I collect pictures. This is a fuel scoop in front of an Earth-like world. This is a fuel <laughs> scoop in front of a rocky world. <laughs> This is one of the special gold fuel scoops, which you'd only get uh, uh, in circumstances which I'm unable to divulge to you yes. at this point, as you are not a member of the Fuel Scoop Appreciation Society. Yes. I have the Platinum Fuel Scoop, which I had to sign an NDA for. <laughs> no, d no, I'm, no I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to come up with anything for that um, initialism. No, no. Oh, okay. No. No, no, that that's all I've that's all I've done. It's been quite quite a quiet week, otherwise. So, um, so, so what? Take away dinners and microwave meals for the rest of the week, then, yeah? <coughs> Cheer over your dead body, mate. <laughs> no, we did do it. Did do a lot of cooking. As a friend of mine, who is a is a, a trucker, it it, the uh, boyfriend of mine, one of my nieces. It was his birthday on Saturday, so wife and I were spending all a Sunday baking bread and making cakes and things. Oh my <coughs> God! Uh, yeah, and and luckily my brother-in-law came past on his way home from work. Oh he yes, loaded up the boot of the car with all the baked goods. He stopped, emptied that, and then drove off again. Mm -hmm. I think it was him anyway. Well, somebody came and picked it was him up. Somebody got a boot full of cakes, is what you're telling me? Yes, yeah. yeah quite. <laughs> Surprised yeah, so there wasn't a queue at the end of your street. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, it's a cul-de-sac. They have to know we're here. Ah, okay, that's fair enough then. No, but yeah, that's what we <clears> did. So yeah, been big, quite quiet. So it's been a minute up now. Can I say for the mug now? Yeah, you can if you want. Yeah, that's Repeti been long enough. Repetition. But, yep, that'll do you. Mm. <laughs> well, that means it's it's now must be my turn. In which case, I finally we get to say hello for the. This is the third go at this now. <clears throat> hello, Litho Breaker. Oh, it was so tempting to just stay silent. <laughs> 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 yeah, too no, 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 give in, give in, give in. Yes, <laughs> I'm, I'm tempted to stay silent for the rest of the show. I think it might be for the best. Since you asked so nicely, Sean. No. Hi. So how's, how's, your, how's your week been? How, how have you, has your month been, actually, since we last spoke to you? Uh, in the last month, I've been discovering how much fun you can have trying to install a network four and a half thousand miles away. Company's hmm. opening a new office in Seattle. Normally, there'd be a team of three of us being flown out there and sort it all out and get it all prepped and sorted and in, and it would have been finished by now. It's not to be, is it? So we're trying to talk people who don't know their left hand from their right through how to configure what is it, forty odd switches, five firewalls. Oh my God, so much storage is ridiculous. Loads of toys that we'd love to be playing with. We can't get near them. Yeah. Right, <laughs> so <laughs> bashing yeah. your head against the desk repeatedly. Yeah, there's uh, a couple of people on the team that now have, um, let's say, bottles of strong alcoholic beverages very close to their keyboards. Uh, Jim, can I ask a quick question? Are you having to do all this at sort of two, three, four, and 5 o'clock in the morning too? Um, thankfully, no. We're just running late because it's there. Well, it's mm. they're getting up at 4 or 5 in the morning and we're working through till 6, 7 at night. To give them a few hours of overlap, yeah. Well, they've not been given a lot of choice, thankfully. So yeah, it, uh, it could be worse. It could be the other way. It could be Japan, and then it'd be up at stupid o'clock in the morning. But uh, yeah, it's um, challenging, and I'm counting the days until we get out of this flipping lockdown now. Oh yeah, you and you and me both. Yes. You and everybody else. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, obviously, it's really good news. We're getting uh, more people with their stabby, stabby, ow my arm, you know, situation and the vaccines going on. And obviously, Flossie mentioned that she's had hers earlier. My mum had hers today, so um, uh, I think Mr. Cow, as um, yeah, as he is have. a carer as well, he, he's he's yeah. managed to get his. Um, the yeah, the a mind's booked for a week Sunday. Nice. 
the conference centre underneath the office where I would be working if I was in the office rather than at home is now a vaccination centre. Has been for about two weeks now, so they're um, they're stabbing people in the arm as they pass. It's great. <laughs> like dart, just play darts with people. There's, there's one for you, stab. There's one for you. Yep, chuck another dart. You know, it's, they're they're doing something like twelve hundred people a day, so it virtually is just slinging them at people as they walk past. It's unbelievable. Like like some kind of Nerf gun with uh, <laughs> with with vaccine in it. Pachu 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 pachu. Yeah. Pachu, pachu. yeah, that's another one done. What you don't want one out? Look. <laughs> <laughs> just, what, just, just work here. Oh, you can have one anyway. Yeah, don't, 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 don't duck. But yeah. um, <laughs> no, yeah, and obviously, um, other than that, flying, you know, flying spaceship. And you know, you, you sound like you've had a real, real busy time and haven't had uh, too much leisure time at the moment. Not a huge amount. I've had a little bit of flying spaceships and crashed them into a few bits and pieces and flown around and almost joined in a couple of CGs and not quite got there in time and. Typical me. Really. Oh, my, my ship's still tr- flying forwards and backwards to Colonia and back on board Hanky's fleet carrier. So, yeah, it's, it's, yeah, I know, I know how that one is. Yeah, I can't even remember where I've parked the fleet carrier. It's been so long since. Yeah, well, at least you've got one. I, I should have been out anyway. Um, so yeah, anything else to add before we? Uh, Just for the mug. For the mug, and lovely to talk to you as usual. You too. Right, Palantir, your and turn. So, yeah, so, yes, it's for me to talk to PBSF Ghost. How the devil are you? Hello. Did we catch you unawares? It's, it's a ghostly ghost. He's ghosting you. <laughs> shall, we all, shall we all join hands and see if we can make contact? Yeah, have a seance to, to, to <laughs> get, get back to the house. There is anybody there. <laughs> <laughs> Tap once for yes and twice for no. <laughs> well, as, as long as you don't Okay, point anybody. then. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you, you better move on to the uh, Commander Taran then. Taran, yeah, oh, go no, on then. Look, well, it's stuck now. <laughs> Is it well, okay. Good Amelia, afternoon. Amelia, Amelia can talk to Taryn. Go on. Hello, Taryn. How are you? I'm great, Amelia. How are you? I'm pretty good. I'm all the better for speaking with you. I haven't seen you in... Well, I haven't heard of, heard from you in ages. How are you? Uh, I'm still recovering, so... Everything on the up, I hope? No, it's not getting any better, which is driving me up the wall. Oh, that's not good news. Are you safe though? Are you are you filling oh, yeah, your hours yeah. with with uh, decent gaming at least? No, I no no. That's just driving me up the wall. I can only spend an hour or two on the computer a day until my head just goes all screwy. Oh, no. So it's uh, rather horrible that way. And uh, although although yesterday I did celebrate another passing of uh, 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 the Earth around Soul, so that's a good. Oh, thing. nice! Happy birthday! Happy birthday! Happy no, we're not singing. <laughs> <laughs> but the, Happy leveling up day. But but the songs the songs that we broadcast on the radio are just so good. Uh, yeah. So uh, I, I, other than that, you know, it's. Uh, I'm... It was my husband's yeah. birthday yesterday as well. A double happy birthday. Hmm. Mm. Did you do anything for your birthday, Taryn? Did you celebrate in any way? Uh. No, not really. Uh, you know, we're uh, we're uh, we're still not allowed to see people here uh, uh, in on on the west coast of Canada. So uh, yeah, I, um, I had dinner with my family and uh, took some phone calls. That's about it. <laughs> well, that's still something. I mean, over here in the UK, I haven't seen my family now in um, just under a year. So <laughs> at least you got that. Well, yeah, except I live with them, and I'm getting tired of seeing them every day. <laughs> oh, ouch. Um so did did you at least have cake? No, no, I didn't have cake either cuz 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 that's something else I'm not supposed to be eating, so I oh, didn't get no. to have that either. Although although I did manage a whiskey or two, so. Oh, well, that's something. Yeah, but we're not going to tell my doctor. So. But was it was it a good whiskey? What kind of whiskey was it? Oh, I, I'm 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 drinking a uh, uh, the Forty Creek uh, Honey Spiced Whiskey. It's it's it's. Forty See, Creek. you can't go wrong when you've got the words honey and spice in I know, anything. Like it's yeah. Well, I'm I'm glad you at least enjoyed that. Didn't go down very well for the toilet paper I used, but never mind. <laughs> I apologise on Harry's behalf. <laughs> oh, shit. oh shit! Oh no no no! I'm 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 
I'm trying to figure out how toilet paper relates to honey spiced whiskey, and that's going to take me a few minutes. <laughs> Damn, yeah. Um. So, do, I mean, if you're if you're getting, like, I'm going to change the subject now. If you if you're at least getting in an hour a day, is there anything in particular you've been doing? Have you been doing any of the CGs or? Or any fun things? I I I, I actually took part in the uh, CG because because I I was on a I was on a break from Elite the last time that CG happened, so I uh, I wanted to make sure I got one of them engineered. It, it was a good one this time as well. Yeah, and 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 you know there's bounty hunting involved in uh, this CG, so so somehow I'm going to manage to take part in that. Nice. Are you into the bounty hunting? No, does a does a bear does a bear uh, <clears throat> use the toilet facilities in the woods? Is Tyra oh into bounty hunting? <laughs> <laughs> oh, is the Pope Catholic? No. Um... <laughs> do, you, do you still hold the record, Taron, or, or have you been knocked off top spot yet? Oh uh, well, well, well. Things things with bounty hunting's uh, 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 the payouts have changed a lot um, um, with the recent update. So so people are now doing you know uh, in a week what. Uh, uh, used to take a very long time, so no, I'm no longer in the top spot. <laughs> Sorry, Amelia, didn't, mean, didn't, that mean, didn't mean to chuckle at your expense <laughs> there. No, so Taron, Taron oh over God. the years of, of, of Hutton trucking has, has been known as a legend of bounty hunting here in Hutton circles. I, I wanted him to express that. Oh, okay. oh I, I couldn't stop laughing. <laughs> I'm trying to get him to talk because this is his spotlight. Oh my minute. God, no, no, I... I did, I just remember poor uh, you know Buck who who who's doing okay by the way um he doesn't have water yet because because he had some pipes burst in his house oh but, no but oh, oh yeah yeah the poor guy <laughs> but between not having any power and two out of his three heat <coughs> coils uh, not working on his heater um um he had a really bad week during the Texas freeze so. <laughs> oh Jesus but I hope he's okay. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He's 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 fine now, and um, he he gets to shower in a, at 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 his neighbor's house. So 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 I can't smell him from here yet. So that's a good sign. <laughs> but uh, poor 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 a buck. I think for a year straight on his uh, um. Oh my god. He's not had the best time of it. No, no, no. I'm tr on the uh. I can't I, even remember. I can hear you desperately clicking away there. No, that's not me. I'm trying to. I'm. I'm trying to remember what the brought to you by Lake on Spaceways. Oh my God, it's right there, and I can't remember what the hell it used to be called. Someone well, the, help me. The, the Hutton's Top Trucker thing they used to do for Lake. <laughs> yeah, oh, the, yeah. Top yeah. Trucker. The, the Top Trucker. Yeah, yeah. Top yeah, trucker. yeah for so let me get this straight. The one time he's he's in trouble and he wants help, nobody talks. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's that, that thing. Oh my lord! I I think I think for a year straight, Buck got to say my name every week, so it, it, I felt sorry for him. <laughs> oh bless! Well, let's hope you can. I mean, did you say you'd lost your top spot? Oh yes, yes, yes. Well, let's hope it won't be long before you can reclaim it. I'll be very. Oh no, no, I'm 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 not going to be able to reclaim that one. You never know. Never say never. Well, well, well. The one thing I am happy about is 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 all of the bounties that I do do generally are for Hutton, and they're not for someone else. So, so, so that's important to me. Yeah, if we were counting Hutton yeah. Hutton only bounties, yes, uh, I, I think you, you'd definitely be up there. Can that be a thing? Can we make that a thing? We, we can. We can talk, talk to the apology officer. Who can talk to Antarius? Who can? Who can talk to the hamsters? Maybe. <laughs> I'm looking at the page at the moment. Mm. And currently, for commanders who have handed down over one billion credits and bounties, Taran four two nine five is in fourth place. But he is the first commander to ever reach one billion credits for bounties handed in. So he is immortalised in the middle of the page there. Nice. I think I was the first to hit one, two, and three. Yeah. They can never take that away from you. Nobody can beat that because you have to be the first. Yeah, and and, and that was back before the payouts got um, before bounty hunting. Before it gets profitable. silly, yeah, <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> nice. That is so cool. A- oh, anyway, yeah. Taryn, um, is there anything else you'd like to? No, add? no. We'll we'll uh, we'll uh, call it there with a for the mug. Thank you for the mug. And I know it's Helen. I'm not sure turn next, but I've heard oh, that PBSF yeah. Ghost has yeah. reappeared. Yes. So go. PBSF Ghost, away. how the devil are you? Oh no. <laughs> he's, he's gone ghostly again. We got a message Seamless. from the ghost saying, I've got my mic, I've got my mic, it's working. And then, yeah, he's, he's vanished. <laughs> right, well, stuff that then, right. Yeah, fine. <laughs> oh, you get to say, you I... get to, oh, what is it? <laughs> um, Helen, yes, off, the to the, off to the cleaners. We're taking you the to the clean. cleaners, yep. Hello, the cleaner. Oh, was he gone? The oh, cleaner again, yes. yes. Yeah. How are you doing? Yeah, not too bad, thanks. Trying to get on your leet, it keeps kicking me off, but hey ho. Oh dear, having some connection problems. Yes, and I'm right in the middle of a heavy influence mission as well. Well, uh, hope you're not uh, time constrained. Fingers crossed. Yeah, well, good luck with that. Yeah. So, anyway, how have you been doing? Yeah, not too bad. I've been scraping every asteroid I can for carrier fuel by by night and during the oh, day. Oh yes, of course, yes. Yeah. Yeah, well in done. A low, and, uh, in a low reserve system as well. It's been fun. Refueling all those carriers. Well done. Yeah, well, like I said, I've offered anyone else who wants to turn up their carrier, whether they're hut and trucker or fuel rack, I'll fill them up. Oh, great. Uh, yeah, and by day, I'm busy in the hospital being trained up to be a dialysis nurse for my wife. Oh, right. Uh, yeah, busy, busy. Yeah. That sounds uh, rather interesting. Different. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I've lived and that's, what, that's it, and for the mug. Okay, thank you for the mug. And I'll hand over to... Well, um, is it uh, is that... apologies, officer? Yes. Oh, okay, I'll do Jake. it if you tr- if you trust me again. <laughs> or is Come it chicks? No, no, no. I don't know. It's, it's chicks. It's chicks. It's chicks. Ch- right. Okay. Okay. Sorry. I'm out. Do you want to toss for it? Toss <laughs> for yeah. it. Heads or, heads or tails? Oh, no, heads or tails, tossing. No, right. No, yeah, uh, next. Oh, you're going to use a coin this time. Yeah. Yeah. Heads. Ah, uh, it's tails. Oh, damn. Do you want to see? No. <laughs> Right. Keep in mind, whoever loses has to talk to uh, Vantion down there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You think I don't know that? <laughs> <laughs> is there anybody there? Yes, there is. Oh, ah. it's Veleran. It is. How indeed. are you? How you doing? I'm good, thank you. Yourself? Yeah, very good, very good. So, you've been very patient. I'm a very patient person. I've had two you wives have. and raised raised five daughters. Wow. You've been productive. <laughs> I only only made three of them, and <laughs> and all of that this week. <laughs> oh God, no! <laughs> no, I've been at work this week because the lovely bosses in my school, while they're sat at home doing the odd lesson from home, have decided that all the technicians need to be in school full time to make oh. it nice and tidy, so that they can take all the credit when they come in with a class. <sighs> yes. Always, always the bridesmaid, never the bride. Have you, have you been in game at all this week? I have, although at the beginning, well, at the end of last week, I got a bit bored with sitting in front of a computer playing Elite, so I mm. went on the PlayStation and played Elite. Uh, so, uh, yeah, <laughs> change of scenery. I went from this chair to that one, uh, and that was, uh, yeah, so I did the CG um, on my PlayStation account, which is also a Valaran. So, mm. It's and, worth and it's worth doing that CG, wasn't it? Because it's uh, it's a pretty good reward. Yes, yeah. Uh, although I didn't get involved with it on my PC. Uh, my main account, the Valaran account, I haven't touched. It's 1% away from the Triple Elite. And mm. I've been working on my second account, which is Calf Pabus. So, so yeah. would you? Would it be fair to say you describe yourself not as a completer finisher? <laughs> <laughs> yes, well, my late wife would uh, certainly say something to that effect. <laughs> yes. So when, um, when, when are you going to finish off the last 1%? Um, probably when I got the uh, the rest of my normal wing back, oh, I, shall, okay. I shall wait and do it. And sort of... Make an event of it. Where? Mm. There's uh, others that are very close to it as well, so sort of all go, <clears throat> if we can, try and get in the same session and just pass it all together. Well, you need to let us let us know and we'll uh, 
<laughs> we'll, we'll we'll talk about it. Yeah. On air, as we we do. We'll do. Um, other than that, it's, I've only been playing Elite. I haven't played anything else. I tried playing Fallout Four, and I just <laughs> just slow and boring. You mean there are other games? Well, my daughter kept telling me there is, so I yeah. thought I'd try, mm. and I didn't like it, so I came back. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah, um, that just a lot of dog walking. So, mm. yeah, nice and relaxing, out across the downs. And yeah. that's all I've been up to this week. So, for the mug. For the mug. Um... I've just had an incoming spooky message no. from PBSF Ghost, who managed without the use of a microphone to to wrap the table and pass the message that they'd just got their first billion in credits and did the CG and made the top 25%. Oh, I the think that's what their spirit well guide told me. Oh, the mm. swine is probably not me at the oh. top 25%. <laughs> it takes that long to spell that out on a Ouija board. Yeah. <laughs> Well, especially when I keep picking the glass up and drinking out of it. <laughs> the ones in Glasgow aren't called Ouija boards, they're called Ouija boards. <laughs> Ouija. Oh, God. Badoom, Tish, I'm here all week. Try the chicken. Oh, dear. I, I mean, we might have to give you a, a proper badoom, Tish, for that one. <laughs> yes. yes. Well, you know, one of the, okay, one of the so, fussy style. Yay. <laughs> so, Vantian. We got to the end of the list. Yay. Yeah, how's your week been? What have you been up to? No, uh, well, yeah, yeah, much, 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 much the same as usual. I've been um, plugging away with um, the guys over at uh, HCS, getting some oh, yeah. new software ready. Um, so working on flying planes in the Hutton Games room. So we've been doing all the uh, aviator stuff for um, Microsoft. Is that, you, is that what you were testing with Rampage then? Oh yeah, yes. When Rampage was trying to kill me by plummeting to the ground, yeah. <laughs> well, that was the yes. alpha. We've managed to get since the last green room the alpha one, two, and three releases out. Uh -huh. um, and yeah, it, it's it's working beautifully. We've we've actually sent a copy off to the guys at Special Effect because you can fly the entire plane, including an airliner, with nothing but your voice. So you can go from parked and everything switched off right up into the air, take a course and in for landing using nothing but voice control. And that was one of our missions for special yeah. effect was to do the full, you know what I mean, to, to enable anybody with, with, you know, who doesn't got a flight yeah, stick and can't use things, you know, with, with manual controls just to use yeah. their voice to fly it. And so yeah. uh, big kudos yeah. to Harry over at special effect. He's been learning how to fly a plane so he can show it off to some of the people they work with. Excellent. You might want to send that to the actual airlines. <laughs> <laughs> if it works in the simulator, it's going to work in oh, a plane. Oh, the bloopers, the bloopers reel that we've had. Um, All right, maybe maybe don't send it to the airlines then. <laughs> no. Uh, I mean, obviously, the number of times I've tried to fly over my own house, because they've got the UK update with all the photogrammetry of the UK, so you can actually fly over my house, and I can see what's on my own balcony at the moment, or as of the last satellite picture that went over. Uh, but the number of times I've actually stuffed it into the roof of my own house trying to get a flyby is <laughs> <laughs> embarrassing. So it's so yeah, we've been we've been working on that um, with HCS, and um, obviously it's, it's been a bit tricky because we can't get in the studio to record new voices for things like Elite and bits. Yeah, um, but so you yeah, covered the, covered your walls and egg cartons then. Uh, well, yes, yeah, something like that. <laughs> Just, um, but it's um, yeah, it, it's 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 been a good laugh doing that. I mean, that has consumed my time. For I, I think Palantir will back me up. I've, I've just been, you know. Absolutely yeah. consumed with this for uh, a few weeks now, or well, since the start oh, of January. Um, but the, I've learned more about planes than I think I need to know. <laughs> you haven't had you haven't had time to get your purple python out and give it an airing, then, no? No, no, it's still somewhere. I don't know. It's on it's on Hanky's carrier flying around the universe. So um, oh, right. <laughs> along with all of my my entire fleet is currently on uh, the Fork Saint Hanky. <laughs> it's been out to Colonia on its own twice since I last flew it, and okay. on the basis he goes once a month. Um, yeah. So yeah. it's around somewhere. I think he's back in Hutton Space at the moment with my ship. So I really ought to log in and get them off, you know, yeah. offload them all back you, in Hutton you Space. Probably want, you probably want to check your warranty, isn't it, based on uh, light years covered as well? Well, does it, does it qualify if it's on board somebody else's fleet carrier? It depends on whether you actually want to pay the claim or not. <laughs> yeah. I'm assuming they don't. <laughs> Other than that, um, some really good news. I actually had a video call with Baz, with Commander Kinrain. Oh, yeah. 
um, oh. who sends his love to everybody. He's he's now been kidnapped from the hospital. I think we did it in the news a couple of weeks ago that he was being kidnapped by Ali back to go home again from yep. the hospital. So he's now back home or at, at Ali's Excellent. house, and his recovery continues. Um, apparently, if she tickles the bottom of his foot, he can just about feel it now on the on the broken side. Oh, that's good. Um, and he was proving that he's got feeling back in his face by slapping himself on the face live on camera and then grinning like a lunatic. So um, as long that that works as long as you get the right side. Yeah, well, you do it in the wrong. You do it in the wrong side, you know. I did suggest it was Ali's job to be doing that, but uh, yeah, <laughs> I think yeah. she just told him off for smacking himself around. So yeah, his Fair recovery enough. is going great, guys. But it was really nice. I mean, he's he's not up for sort of like you know joining in the green room just yet. He wanted to see how a conversation went, and um, his speech has come on like leaps and bounds. Um, and uh, he's, sort of, he's picking his own arm up and sort of waving it. The, the one that doesn't work, probably waving it around and saying, well, it isn't quite working yet. So his sense of humor is there. <laughs> it was so yeah. good to see him smile. I mean, it was just, it lifted my day just oh, to see yeah. Baz with a huge grin on his face for about half an hour during a conversation. So um, Fantastic. The NHS have done a grand job um, looking after him, albeit he got over the COVID thing and whatever else as well. But he... Yeah. Um, um, they've done a grand job sort of getting him back to where he is and his recovery. I mean, he's he's actually working too hard at his recovery. He's knackering himself out um, <laughs> doing the recovery. So, I mean, that, that was wonderful to, to, to see him and speak to him. Um, yeah. And obviously we've been letting the, and I think he's been letting the banter bus know, uh, Verloren and the team also know how he's getting along via typing and text message. So he's now beginning to get back into typing messages to people too. Fantastic. Um, so he's... Um... Yeah, the the six million credit man is on the mend then. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and he's obviously he sends his love to absolutely everybody, and loads of people have been sending him little videos. I know Dead Meat sent him a whole pile of videos, and we sent that one over from everybody. And he's been watching yeah. those. Uh, he says he's not read all the Facebook messages yet because he doesn't want to ball like a baby quite yet. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> he'll pick his moment for that, will he? <laughs> yeah, because he knows he knows what he's like. We know what he's like, and we did it just to make him, you know tearful in the, oh, in, the yeah. in the happy way but yeah yeah so yeah i mean other, other than that really it's been sort of homeschooling and <coughs> making sure my mum gets a covid jabs and making sure mm. the family's staying safe and i i, I definitely second taron's comment from earlier about the um yeah, i love them to bits but my goodness being stuck for a whole year in a house with them you know <laughs> <It's> just... <laughs> Yeah, I'm usually off at work and visiting Glasgow and all sorts of yeah. with you guys for, for events. Did, did you not have a shed you can go to? Uh, the studio here, but yeah, there's a sort of a knock at the door or a bang on the ceiling every now and again. You know? Oh, God, you don't want that. No, my, no you, my, need to get, you need my, to get further away. Yeah, my Thursday <laughs> evenings are sacrosanct, though, so they, they at least leave me have the peace and quiet on a Thursday, Thursday evening. But obviously, yeah, yeah but, um, you know, uh, Mini, Mini 21 is going to be back at school oh, soon-ish. Um, right. So um, at least some that, of my daytimes will come back. Yeah, yeah, that's good. That's good. <laughs> yeah. So that's that's ten point five then. He's not not twenty one. <laughs> well, he's yeah. ten point five. Well, yeah, he's 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 not quite he's not quite re- reached half half yet. Though he's getting taller for goodness sake. Oh well, that's okay then. Yeah, but um, yeah, I mean it'll be absolutely lovely hearing the news. Obviously, that things hopefully by the summer will begin to get back to normal, and of course I can plague some of you lot by coming to visit you and uh, say hi in person and stuff. I'm, I'm I'm looking forward to that. Like you wouldn't believe getting oh, back yeah, in to go, go to have a beer with 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 you know you guys, uh, everybody from the Hutton community and whatever. It's going to be you wonderful. N- you nearly said real people there, didn't you? Real, pardon what? And then you realised who you were talking about. Real <laughs> <laughs> You are real people. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we had somebody sneak in. Yeah, well, you know what I mean? Actually face-to-face. Yeah. Um, wh- whether it's going out to our Bodines in London that I do with Commander Aiden or it- it's up to the uh, Brazilian barbecue with, with uh, the Scottish contingent. Yeah. Um, ECM 2022. Yeah, ab- absolutely. And yes. we're hoping, fingers there, crossed. Darren, you got a whiskey on order. <laughs> I can hear a voice in the background. I think somebody snuck in. So I'm going to say for the mug, but I think somebody mm. snuck in. We, 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 we have two new ones. Yes, we've got Veleran talking talk of the devil. Say say their name, and they will appear Veleran. No, no, we had Veleran. It's the V just R seed. It's the V just R seed. My my my. Yeah, it's Vija. Yeah, my John. my um, battle cards playing man. companion. Yes. Yes. John, how the devil are you uh, out there in Welsh Wales? I am doing absolutely fine. When are we going to have that rematch? We do need the rematch. It'll make a change from you crashing aeroplanes. 
Oh dear. I've been playing around with that new HCS pack. It's absolutely brilliant. Oh, which one? The Aviator one? Yeah. Oh, well, thank you. It's 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 been enormous fun. But, uh, yeah, as you, you can imagine learning way too much about planes to make that thing work. So uh, we're looking forward to getting the voices back in for that one. Um, you know, the, the guys back in the studio to get all the rest of the sounds in and the chit-chat. We, we're getting some of the you know, cabin crew in there. You know, place this over your nose and mouth and breathe normally kind of messages from behind. Yeah, what you've got to bear in mind, though, is flax. Does not mean you stick your arms through the window and start <laughs> waving them around. No, flat, flat, <laughs> flaps is, flat flaps are what happened when, when we had that panic the other day. Yes, we flapped thoroughly when the plane was plummeting. <laughs> you said cabin crew. Do you want me to do a, a trace cabin crew? Voice I would, we, I, I would, we're going to be, I think, whether we're going to crowdsource it or get loads and loads and loads of different, maybe 30 different people to do it. We're looking at <laughs> ideas for that at the moment, for the for the full script for, you know, um, the, the captain has now turned the seatbelt light on. Will you please sit down? <laughs> kind of. I would love to do one of what the cabin crew wish they could say when they all the, all yeah. the public are misbehaving. I really would, but I can't make promises on that. So it's not about me though; it's about Vija. So I'm gonna I'm gonna shut up now. Absolutely, I, I could always bring my sheep along for that incident. Um, I mean, event. <laughs> <laughs> the real one or the inflatable one? Oh, yeah, the blow up one. You don't think I'm bringing the real one anywhere near Scotland, do you? <laughs> <laughs> no, I keep that He's saving it all for himself. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Doesn't like to share it. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Hello. Well, it's it's really lovely to hear from you, uh, Vija, as well. And um, yeah, I, th I think that just about rounds off our green room. I don't think anybody else has snuck in, so we might as well finish the finish the show from in here. Before we go, does anybody have anything else to add? No. Yes. Just yes. The one thing. Yes, we've been talking most nights, and we think it'd be a really good idea if uh, the voice packs people could get hold of the policeman from a lower low. Oh goodness, <laughs> Officer, Cra <laughs> Officer Crabtree! God, Arthur Bostrom. Yeah, that's all. Mm. Well, I'll put it in the suggestion box. I definitely, I'll, I'll put it in the suggestion box. <clears throat> just, tra just drag show? him in. Just drag him in if he's pissing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, look. Uh, other than that, it just remains, uh, Amelia. Well, the one thing we have left to say then. For the mug. For the, For the mug. mug. For the mug. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, and that's the end of the show. Everybody's buggered off now, so why don't you bugger off too? Journey too long, a cargo too small. Profit margins never really mattered at all We're gonna take the cargo where it's needed today Super cruising all across the Milky Way We're taking anything, anytime, anyway Load another teen out to the brim With the rest for the more For the more For the more For the more Yeah, you know just where we're coming from For the more For the more For the more For the more Yeah, everybody's seen the trucker's song Flossy always seems to crash into the sun Skip all eyes to pile it on the Xbox One Having out the free, you know it leads us well Truck across the galaxy, now everybody yeah For the more, for the more, for the more, for the more Yeah, you know just where we're coming from for the more, for the more, for the more, for the more. Everybody sing the hunting trucker's song. For the more, for the more, for the more. You know just where we're coming from. For the more, for the more, for the more, for the more. Everybody sing the hunting trucker's song.
give me a large pile that I can land on And I'll give you cargo and sing you my song No point twenty-two light years to go Cruising to what? Journey too long, no cargo too small The profit margins never really mattered at all We're gonna take the cargo where it's needed today Super cruising all across the Milky Way We're taking anything, any time, anywhere So shout it out loud like you don't even care For the more, for the more, for the more, for the more Yeah, you know just where we're coming from For the more, for the more, for the Everybody sing the Chucker song For the more, for the more, for the more Yeah, you know just where we're coming from For the more, for the more, for the more Everybody sing the Chucker